in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed by knowledge, breaking free by wisdom. Skapa katala baka prenda gete brato skata le bariada balada bako prende kesi bata. Says, arise, shine, for your light is come. Arise, shine, for your light is come. Arise, shine, for the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The Gentiles will come to your light and their kings to the brightness of your rising. Refuse to look at your situation. Go ahead and prophesy. I don't care what is happening in your life. Go ahead and prophesy. The lifter of men is about to lift me. Go ahead and pray. The exalter of men is about to exalt me. The one who can make ordinary men to shine as the brightness of the stars and as the firmaments of the heavens is about to lift me. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 29. Verse 11. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. It's projected. Let's read together. One, two, read. It says, For I know the thoughts. As I'm sitting on the throne, I'm thinking of you. And I know the thoughts that I'm thinking of. You may not know it, but I know it. And he said, they are thoughts of peace. And not of evil, not of destruction. To bring you an expected end. And the Bible says, surely there is an end. Everything that does not have a beginning, does not deserve to have an end. But everything that has a beginning surely has an end. It says, I know the thoughts that I think. I know it. I know what is in my mind for you. It says, they are thoughts of good. Hallelujah. Remember when Moses said, show me your glory. He said, I will let my goodness pass. It's the goodness of God that grants you access to his glory. And in ancient times, every time you talked about the glory of a king, you meant one word, wealth. It says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Yes, in that family, that disastrous family, I still know the thoughts that I think towards you. You didn't eat anything this morning. You're seated here hungry. You had to trek, but I know the thoughts that I think towards you thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end hallelujah we're just going to pray one prayer point i'd like you to lay hands on yourself and prophesy command your spirit to hear the word of the lord command your body to be attentive to the word of the lord the bible says the seed that fell on bad ground are those who hear the word but immediately the enemy cometh and takes the word. Immediately. Immediately. Satan cometh and he will take the word away from them. Immediately. Immediately. 
prophesy to yourself cultural barriers limitations challenge them in the name of jesus open up the gates of your spirit and your soul to the word of the lord i grant the king entrance to my life i grant his word entrance to my life for the entrance of your word give it light and even understanding to the simple prophesy and call this night your night of encounter call it your night of revelation that when many are looking you will see something tonight as many are hearing you will listen something will fall upon your spirit that will be a testament of the reaction of the word in your life realize that there are thousands dependent on your prayer and your attentiveness tonight pray and say i choose to change it's a choice i choose to change i choose to break that barrier i choose to challenge and confront and conquer that financial limitation I tell you it's not an insurmountable mountain it's not an insurmountable mountain it's not an insurmountable mountain hallelujah Jesus, we depend on you. There is nothing we can do without you. You have transformed the lives of millions and billions. Men by the secrets we'll be sharing tonight have influenced their territories. Oh, let the ancient words ancient words ever true changing me and changing you we have come with open hearts oh let the ancient words hallelujah praise the lord Psalms 112 from verse 1 to 3. You're welcome to our financial series. We bless the Lord for His grace. It's a privilege to bring this teaching. I'm honored to discern the change that can happen and will happen and must happen in lives at the end of this series. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord that diligently that delighted greatly in his commands. Verse 2. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Read verse 3 together. One more time. Go ahead and personalize it. One to read. One more time. Psalm 35 verse 27. Psalm 35 verse 27. Yes, Lord, we hear your word tonight. 
Psalm 35, verse 27. Are you there? Go ahead and read. One to read. Let the Lord be magnified, which had pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Let them continually shout for joy and let them say, let him be magnified. The Lord who had prosperity, who had pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. We're going to go straight to the point. I have I've struggled through the week to try to make this series as rich as possible and as straightforward as possible, as direct as possible. I've spent a major part of my life studying the subject of success, the subject of wealth and prosperity, aside from my primary assignment. I have studied hundreds of people, millionaires, billionaires, both in the kingdom and outside the kingdom. I have read countless books. I have listened to videos in an attempt to simplify this mysticism around success, especially financial prosperity. A subject that is secretly admired by so many. A subject that has remained a mystery to so many, especially in the body of Christ. A subject that many have neglected to their detriment. A subject that has destroyed others. Very mysterious subject. Every time you talk about money in the body of Christ, you attract all kinds of reactions. You attract self-centered reactions from people who think the idea of God to bless them is just to lavish money carelessly or you face a wall of religious resistance. All kinds of reactions. Yet this concept of money is the key, the very key to the quality of our lives on earth and can even affect your eternity. Hallelujah. So I'd like for us to please in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, pay attention to today's teaching and throughout this series. In the last one year of my life, I have learned more about finance and prosperity than I have all my life put together. I have discovered things that have made me cry. I have cried and said, why didn't I know this even if it was six, seven or so years ago? When you find truth and it is really truth, you will rejoice. It will gladden your heart. Are you getting what I'm saying? So I want us to please pay attention. Many of us here are representing our destinies, our families, our generations. So many are dependent if I ask everyone to come up here and in one minute articulate to us the financial situation in our lives and our families and our territories, for many of us we will end up weeping here because it's easy to dress well and look nice in church. It's easy to pretend as though the subject of money is something that should not be considered. It's a deception of the enemy. Hallelujah. It's a big deception of the enemy. One of the blessings of a visionary ministry is to be able to guide and teach the people that God has committed to that ministry all the precepts of the kingdom that are responsible for securing their eternal destiny and then making the most out of their lives here in the earth. Hallelujah. The church is an institution. And the primary assignment of an institution is to shape people into a form, into a fashion. The church is an institution. 
any society is largely a reflection of the church in that territory hallelujah that's why every revival and everywhere the church and the gospel has been embraced civilization also came with it praise the lord and so it's important for us to listen to pay attention hallelujah the bible tells us that god is interested in our prosperity and this is not the first time we are holding a series on prosperity we do this every year is part of our building process i do not believe in the kind of christianity that makes someone heaven bound um anointed but poor and broke because like the anointing prosperity is part of the tools that will be responsible for building the kingdom of god now i'm not going to go into too much of the things that we have covered in the last session there is there are teachings on the economic system of the kingdom there are teachings on um, financial dominion the last series we had last year and i don't want to repeat myself because these things are captured so we are going to um, i will just do a quick recap because i have a lot to talk about we want to delve into another paradigm in this series i wouldn't want to repeat the same thing in the last series we took out time to explain define a lot of terminologies if you've not listened to financial dominion part one to four please please listen to it hallelujah it's the foundation the building block to what i'll be sharing and so i'm comfortable to share and take it from here assuming that at least many of us still have the understanding that we got from the last financial series although i'll do a bit of um, a recap hallelujah in the last series we talked about the concept of prosperity how that the word prosper means to do well it's just a quick recap and i taught us that there are four levels or five levels also of prosperity hallelujah number one is spiritual prosperity your eternal salvation your relationship with jesus christ number two mental prosperity the state of your wellness your mental um, state of productivity number three your health I told you that health is wealth your bodily prosperity number four your financial prosperity now um, the subject of abundance and financial freedom and so on and so forth and then number five is your relational prosperity the prosperity of your relationship with your fellow people and we said that as a believer or in the kingdom these five areas must be complete in your life for you to be called prosperous meaning if you have money and no relationships both with jesus and with men something is wrong you are not prosperous hallelujah very very important so um we took our time to explain in the last series again on the concept of poverty i will still define that we spoke about a few terminologies poverty prosperity and so on and so forth and we examined a few statistics we examined a few things about poverty I shared with us on the spiritual laws of wealth tithing giving we took our time to talk extensively about the different avenues for giving kingdom investments profit offering um, so on and so forth and then we looked at the natural laws the gift of a man makes room for him i spoke about the concept of value problem solving and so on and so forth um i, I can't remember what else i spoke about but then i think we did go that far but we'll be looking at another paradigm um, in this series praise the lord so let me just define a few things i want to be very direct and i trust that god will help us in jesus name financial prosperity what is financial prosperity exactly please be sure to write even if you don't have something to write you can type it on your phone or your devices whatever it is that you have financial prosperity means freedom from poverty freedom from poverty lack and the negative effects that come with them financial prosperity means freedom from lack poverty and the negative effects that come with them open bracket let's list out some of the negative effects number one fear 
Number two, insecurity. Number three, greed. Number four, self-centeredness. Number five, unrighteousness. And the list goes on and on and on. So prosperity means financial prosperity now. Talks about freedom. Total freedom from poverty, from lack, insufficiency, and the negative effects. I tell you there are negative effects that poverty can bring to the life of a man. Hallelujah. I'll give you another definition. Financial prosperity also means having abundant financial supplies. Having abundant financial supplies alongside the means to replenish, multiply, and sustain its availability. Having abundant financial supplies alongside the means to replenish multiply and sustain its availability to have financial supplies is not enough there must be in you the ability to replenish to multiply and to sustain that supply at that point you are financially prosperous Hallelujah. Are we blessed? Number two, let's define poverty. These are the two major words that we're dealing with. One is our friend, the other is our enemy. So let's define both of them. What is poverty? Poverty is a perpetual state of lack and insufficiency of financial resources. Poverty is the perpetual state of lack and insufficiency of financial resources often characterized by lack of productivity. A perpetual state of lack and insufficiency of financial resources often characterized by lack of productivity. If you have that down, say amen. It's important for us to understand exactly what we are talking about. So that we are not lost in assumption as to what exactly we are talking about. It is the will of God for every single one of us seated here. To come to a point in our lives where we have abundance of financial supplies alongside the capacity to replenish to multiply and to sustain its availability hallelujah now the church let me start by saying this the church has largely or greatly suffered from what i call the incomplete teaching on wealth and prosperity one of the biggest tragedies of the church today financially speaking is that most preachers do not have financial literacy and i told you the church is an institution an institution is any platform that permits the transference of knowledge institution is necessary for development for productivity in any society there are governmental institutions. There are security institutions. Right? And so on and so forth. The church as an assembly, the gathering, the congregation of people is also an institution. Both a spiritual institution and an institution in terms of education and impartation of knowledge. So most of the mindset that people have had about finances, especially in the continent of Africa and Nigeria, has come directly from men of God because most people do not read books, they don't attend seminars, they have no passion and appetite for knowledge in terms of financial intelligence. So their principal channel of communication, aside from education that gives them degrees and certificates, you are only in school for five years, but you are in the church for the rest of your life. Is that true? And so the church is a stronger institution 
that communicates knowledge. So the, the, the lack of financial knowledge and intelligence and literacy that we have is a direct reflection of the men of God that are upon our pulpits. Many men of God are anointed. Many men of God are sincere. Many men of God are genuine. They love God with all their heart. Many men of God are rich. They are wealthy. But very few have financial literacy. Is God helping us? And that lack of financial literacy has created all kinds of lopsided teachings about prosperity. So, different men of God have their views, which is a product of their experiences. How they became blessed is how they will teach you. Is that not true? And many of the ways that, they, that the men of God are blessed by can only bless a man if he is a preacher. If you are not a preacher, you cannot be blessed by the methods they teach. And we'll see that in the course of the series. Are we getting blessed? And so we have a congregation that is largely aware of just one side of the requirements for true and lasting financial prosperity. Men of God have written all kinds of books about their perspectives and we must take our time to appreciate the contributions that they have made. It is only what you have that you can give. Is that not true? But then the Bible says a good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. In other words, if I love my sheep so much or God's sheep has committed to me, I must go out of my way for their sake beyond my experience to find out what is really required for them to prosper. It's called passion. It's called the heart of a pastor. The heart of a shepherd. It is selfish and self-centered. When a man of God comes around his perspective about wealth and advocates that perspective alone to people and the result of that lopsided teaching is that only one person is getting blessed. The person who is doing the teaching. And those who are passionately receiving and swallowing up everything he's advocating hook, line and sinker find out that they are doing their very best but they don't seem to connect to this key. And tonight, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I trust that God will bring a perspective for us that can make every one of us seated here who is truly interested to be blessed. In the name of Jesus Christ. The result of the lopsided financial teachings that have come in the church, the result is lost. Greed. Impatience. Materialism and carnality. You see that? This is the result. The resultant effect of the lopsided teachings we have brought to the body of Christ about prosperity is what has produced lost in people. And so, you have a congregation that is so passionate about money, everything about their lives is money. If it's not money, if you cannot show me the financial component of what you are doing, I'm not interested. So we have a church that is hungry and desperate for money anyhow. Whether by stealing, whether by defrauding people, no matter what it is, they want to be passionate because of the nature and the type of the teaching. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have taught people that they are not blessed because they do not have faith. We have taught all kinds of imbalanced teachings that have come popular. But many of them do not hold water. Listen, let me tell you something. If you listen to what I'm teaching you tonight, I give you a guarantee you will be blessed. It's a guarantee. Hallelujah. We see a lot of impatience. For instance... There are many young people in many churches who will see a jeep parked outside and immediately after the service will go and snap it, lay hands on it, claim it and do all of that. How many young people in churches are looting, cheating people, saving money just to buy a jeep to prove that this prosperity thing is working? To prove that they are carrying a prosperity anointing. Is that true? A young man who earns just 50,000 
you see him living in a house of 750,000 because of the pressure as advocated by his man of God to prove that the word is working. Is that true? Impatience. Many people have compromised on the law of process because of the teachings. The men of God come and advocate a sharp, sharp prosperity message. Right? A message that if you can connect to immediately, tomorrow your life can change. And there will be testimonies of people that have received that kind of result. And everybody is passionate and they have no appetite for true knowledge. They do not have the staying power and the discipline to learn the principles and the protocol to the wealthy place. And so that lust is there. Everybody is moving around. Oh God, I will serve you. So that somebody from nowhere will just bless me and change my story. It has been the basis for our many unscriptural prayers. Hallelujah. Statistically speaking, um, I wanted to play a little documentary for us, but I thought it would waste time. So maybe next week if we have time. Hallelujah. Wow, there's a lot going on here. Can you help me, guys? Can we push this a little back? So that it can save me a lot of stress from this. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Did you know that statistically speaking, about 20% of the wealthiest people in the world control 80% of the entire wealth in the world. In fact, just seven, seven of the world's wealthiest people have the wealth that is equivalent to two-third. Two-third of the entire world's wealth is controlled by seven people. Why is this so? Hallelujah. In Nigeria, for instance, there are many people who cannot live off, statistically speaking, one dollar. That's the poverty bench. That means there are people who cannot afford 150 to 200 naira per day to live on. Many of these people go to churches every Sunday, true or false. Many of these people are taught by preachers that our God is a loving God. Since I was born, how is it? Now I am older. Brother, have you seen? You have seen it. Keep quiet. You have seen it. I'm not insulting the song. I'm just showing us the part of the song where we are telling lies. And many people dance and sweat their lives out and go back to the secret place and say, God, what is wrong? Who is lying here? You or my pastor or me? There is a lie somewhere in this equation. Somebody is not telling the truth. Hallelujah. How many angry church members do we have in Nigeria who have done everything they have been told to do over decades and nothing has happened? And the best spiritual explanation to save both the man of God and his integrity is the victim does not have faith. Praise the Lord. Is that really it? Is that real? How could God, who delights in the prosperity of his servant, make the subject of wealth and prosperity so mystical? Does that look like the God you serve? Hallelujah. The subject of wealth and prosperity, the, the mysticism around it is so much that every time you mention it, all that comes to people's mind is the pain of their past or their current situation. There's nothing joyful they think about money. You mention money or anything that looks like wealth and prosperity and you see this air of anger and pain that comes as a result of frustration. So people just prefer to let it lie low there. Or come to church and we keep telling our lies as usual.
when the Lord brings a word like this, the Bible says he sent a word to Jacob, but it lighted upon Israel. When the Lord brings a word like this to you, it's because of what you represent. It's because of many in your house that are waiting passionately and desperately. Poverty has done more harm, brothers and sisters, more than we can ever imagine. Our ladies have gotten into prostitution because of poverty. Many people have married the wrong men because of poverty. Your mother has given you a direct, unambiguous warning about bringing a prosperous man as a succor to their decades of untold hardship. So you, are, you represent the investment of the family. They have warned you. They started doing it indirectly, but now that you are of age, they are very direct about it. So every time a brother approaches you, you look at him in the lens of the warning you receive and say, brother, no. It's not like you are not born again, but you don't represent the hunger of my family. Is that true? How many young men in Nigeria? Do you know, I, I, I like looking at statistics a lot because I like working based on facts. Are you aware, oh graduate or prospective graduate, that only one out of every ten or more now graduates ever find any decent and meaningful job within the first five years of their graduation in Nigeria, not America. That means it's one thing to go to school, pay the price. This is what you would have really worked on. It will affect the camera. It's better for us to have peace, please. Please, please, please. It's their time. They are part of the meeting. And there's nothing we can do. There is no system of driving them aside from offing this. So I will appreciate it if you can just do something about it. It will affect your coverage. Please snap, snap. Ah, okay. I see. Maybe next week I'll stand outside. That's just the safest point. Praise God. Okay, let's continue. There's no sacrifice that is too great. Not this. This is, this is what many homes have as default. So there's nothing to run around. I mean, this is what floats around many poor homes. Is that not true? Not your home. I mean many poor homes. <sighs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. So many graduates finish from Nigeria and when they come out of the university, they are happy. They serve and then they go to Uncle A or B and say, Uncle, I'm now a graduate. And he says, so what about it? And then they are shocked, right? And at first, they still believe the world is working and forcing it to work. One year, nothing works. Two years, nothing works. Three years, nothing works. And then it downs on them that that thing I've been hearing is real. Praise the Lord. So what exactly is the problem? The first topic we'll be considering tonight is why are so many people poor? Don't worry, don't worry. There's nothing we can do about it. We'll just manage. But I really believe something can be done. Why is this? Why are they here? Why not there? Praise the Lord. Why are there so many poor people? Is it a cause? Is it, is it something that should be? Did God design it that way? If no, what is wrong? I want to give you a few reasons. All of them, all of the reasons I'm about to give you will surprise you. Some of them are deceptfully simple that you may tend to ignore it. But please, I want you to write it and just let me talk to you. Are we blessed? Are we following, please? Number one. Why are so many people poor? Number one. Ready for this? They are poor because they have not decided to be wealthy. Many people are poor and will remain poor. Please underline the word decided because they have not decided to be wealthy. Now, this will shock you. Just hang on until I explain it. 
Many well-meaning people in Nigeria are poor. And some of us seated right here have been extreme victims of poverty and lack and insufficiency because we have not decided to be wealthy. Number two, why are so many people poor? In fact, you can even put in bracket, why are so many Christians poor? Because it's, it's understandable if, if people are generally poor, there are demons around, there are all kinds of things around, but why are Christians, tongue-talking Christians, tight paying Christians, faithful Christians, why are we poor? Number two, many are poor because they do not have a goal to be wealthy. Mm. They do not have a goal to be wealthy. Underline the word goal. Many are poor because they do not have a goal to be wealthy. Number three, why are so many people poor? Many are poor. This is a major reason now. Many are poor. You can bring that lady here. She can come and sit here, please. Those people who are having issues, you can come and sit here. There's, there's just endure people. There's, there's only so much we can do about it. Sorry about it. Number three, are you there? Lack of understanding the real formula for wealth and abundance. Write real formula for wealth and abundance in capital letter. The third reason why so many people are poor is because of the lack of the understanding of the real formula. They have all kinds of things they call formulas, but the real formula for wealth and abundance. Lack of understanding of the real formula The biggest of all reasons why people are poor, number four, the biggest of them all is lack of the mental transition from the realm of poverty to wealth and abundance. Oh, listen to me. Listen to what I'm about to teach you, please. Lack of the mental transition, underline the word mental transition, from the realm of of poverty to wealth. These are the four major reasons, brothers and sisters. Look up, please. These are the four major reasons why our parents, our loved ones, our churches, our preachers, myself, you, and all the people that have suffered poverty. This is the reason why many are poor today. And while they will continue to be poor. They have not decided to be wealthy. They have not set it as a goal to be wealthy. They do not even understand that wealth has a formula. They surround the subject of wealth and prosperity with a lot of mysticism. And they hope that their spirituality will somehow find its way into making them blessed. No sir. All of us today in this place are dressed with clothes because there is a formula. Is that not true? There is a formula for wearing trousers. You don't carry a trouser and wear it from your head down. No. The design does not permit that. Is that true? Every gentleman here, every lady, everybody here on trousers knows that there is a formula for wearing trousers. Whether you have one hand or one leg is irrelevant. You just need to just tweak the formula a little but it is the same formula it will start down and you will put your feet and lift the trouser up the same way you you put on your shirts is that not true there is a formula for putting on watch nobody ties watch around his head out of confusion no except if it's just for all these carnivals and the rest that people do but no sane person in society would do that they use either their left or right hand but there is a way to go about it is that true are you getting me? There is a formula for picking and answering your call. Is that true? It doesn't matter what kind of phone. From 3310 
to the one they made today the formula is similar are you getting me now there is a formula with which a woman uses to give birth to a child occasionally she may have to go through CS, but there is a formula there is a formula to which everyone eats food passes through the mouth is that true even if for any reason you have to use pipes because the person is, is sick and cannot swallow or something is wrong with the person it is still just an adjustment to the same formula please are we are we getting what i'm saying the reason why everybody wears clothes on earth is because there is a formula to do it and everyone knows it's simple enough are you getting me by the time you put a lot of mysticism around clothes imagine someone coming in right now and he put his clothes and didn't know how to put it well right where the neck will be is where he put the hand and just patched it anyhow and said nobody taught me the reason why you are smart and decently seated is because subconsciously you have known the formula for dressing if i ask you to walk now everybody that has two legs and can walk aside from people who are sick walk with a formula is that not true pastor femi come which step did you take left or right which was the first step you do not even know that's how much you have mastered the formula for walking. Are you getting me? I simply asked you to come and you didn't use your head to start coming. You know that you take on your... Are you getting me now? Walking is predictable because there is a formula. Is God speaking to us, please? Is God speaking to us? Bless you. Every time the law Governing and operation is not known. Mysticism. Mysticism is the result. Whenever we do not understand a lot of things, we tie so much mysticism in it. There are so many people that tie a lot of mysticism to the operation of the anointing. Because either they do not operate like that or they just operate at a basic level. But the more you grow into the anointing, you know that as have hazard. As the operation of the spirit and the anointing is there are exact spiritual laws is that true so it is with wealth brothers and sisters please write it and style it there is a formula a formula that is beyond gender a formula that is beyond race a formula that is beyond background a formula that is beyond educational qualification if it is true that anything predictable in life is because it has a formula i announce to you that if you do not know the formula that governs wealth you will never be sustainably wealthy there's no point arguing it and then number four mental transition i'm just recapping on what i just said mental transition mental transition the next thing i want to talk about please write it down the myths and mindsets that keep people poor. Myths. M-Y-T-H-S. And the mindsets. There are ideologies. There are cliches. There are alibis. There are sayings that people have embraced, believed, that have kept them poor. They have kept territories poor. They have kept churches poor. They have kept businesses poor. They have kept families poor and will continue to keep them poor. I want to identify a few of them. Is God helping us tonight? Number one, myth number one is that money and abundance is carnal, evil, or unnecessary. The first myth and mindset that keeps people poor and will keep them poor forever and they support it with the scripture first timothy chapter 6 verse 10 media help us very fast let's see how far oh beautiful god bless you for this lovely work you're doing so that everybody can follow no matter what your brain capacity is this is simple enough for you to follow so we expect that we should ride at the same pace please praise the lord that money and abundance is carnal, evil, 
unnecessary. Some of you seated here, inside and outside, looking at me. And many who are following us online and many who will be listening. That, that stumbling block is one of the things that has stopped us from even paying attention to the subject of wealth. 1 Timothy 6 verse 10. It says, For the love of money huh, is the root of all evil. It says, For the love of money is what? The root of all evil. While, which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through many sorrows. Now, many preachers have taken this scripture and twisted it and made it look like every time there is any desire in your heart to be blessed, you are carnal, you are fleshly, you are of the devil. The Bible never said money is the root of all evil. It said the love. The word used there is the word eros. I've taught us here, right? Eros. An ungodly affinity, an attachment to money and finance that can lead you to losing your faith and you can pierce yourself with needless sorrows. The Bible never, never, ever, never, ever says money is evil or money is the root of evil. The number one myth that has kept a lot of Africans and well-meaning Nigerians and well-meaning you talk about money, especially to those who are a bit elderly and hear their response about it. No, 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 no. no. Take the world and give me Jesus. Right? And it's supposed to be a very innocent cliche, but we need to observe what we're saying. Let me tell you, that conclusion was unconsciously drawn after repeated frustrations. Usually that's what happens. When you try and try and try and try and try, and do all you know and nothing works you safely create something that excuses you is that true i know oh, what a joy when you find a scripture that can back up your frustration that's what has happened to a lot of people some of us seated here right now myth number two if god really wants me rich he will make me rich Myth number two. False beliefs that people have embraced that has kept them poor, kept churches poor, kept territories poor. And their supporting scripture is Psalms 84 verse 11. I'm showing you myths. We're examining myths, mindsets, ideologies that people have embraced that have given Satan access to whip them with poverty. If God wants me rich, he will make me rich. If I am not rich, it's because it's not the will of God. God did not plan for me to be rich. Many of our parents told us that. They whipped us as they said it. God doesn't want us rich. Us, we are... Is, no, 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 no. This is the scripture. For the Lord God is a son and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. And that means if I love God and I'm fasting, I'm a member of Koinonia Prayer Band, I'm a member of the worship team, right? I serve God with all my heart and I do not see abundance. Based on this scripture as twisted by many preachers, it convinces us that this is a sign from heaven that you and prosperity is not part of your, your lot. And you embrace it happily and satisfactorily. Most of the preachers that preach that thing, you go to their board meetings and hear them argue about their salary. You go to their board meetings and hear them argue about welfare. Right? Argue about so many things. The man who is preaching that error has his car parked outside. Immediately after the service, he's walking happily. There is chicken or turkey that has been prepared to him for him by his wife. There is prophet's offering or whatever waiting for him after the service. And the helpless congregations who have swallowed that error like a drug will begin to see its reaction in their lives. Hallelujah. Is God helping us? Meet number three. One of the most deceptive. That tithing is the one and only key to abundance. Ah, yeah. 
this looks common many of us until now as i'm talking you have embraced it as your master key and only key to a world of financial abundance let me tell you there is no fallacy that is bigger than that this will shock many of you and i'm sure many people will now persecute me that myth that tithing is the one and only key that is responsible for abundance in the life of a man i am telling you this hear me is a deception from the pit of hell that means when i come before god and i drop my tithe i go back and i say lord that is it where is the money and we wait days turn to months months turn to years years turn to decades there are people that have been tithing faithfully for decades but it seems as though God has refused to open the heavens for them. It is not the unfaithfulness of God. It is our not understanding his ways. At the end of this teaching, you will get on your knees and worship God because you will see that he is truly a faithful God. Hallelujah. And we support it with Malachi 3.10, popular scripture. Right? Prove me now, here we said the Lord, if I will not open... The windows of heaven and pour you a blessing the bible never said if i will open heaven and pour you money he said a blessing number one you need to even know where the room is that the blessing is going to come because the bible says that the blessing will come into a room where is it the last time you check your room you didn't see anything yet that means you must understand god's language our lack of understanding has made us to embrace a lot of error number four another deceptive myth as we are going it gets more intense because this one I'm about to say affects so many of us here ready for it mm. myth number four that keeps people poor and if they don't change will keep them poor forever if I can just have a business idea and start up capital I will be rich how deceptive many of you are shocked right now all i need to be rich give me capital give me a business idea and i will be rich how deceptive i assure you hear me i assure you if this was all there was to wealth i give you a guarantee that over 70 to 80 percent of nigerians would have been financially free today is that true you meet an average young person right come ken meet somebody and tell him what do you think what can i do to you how can i contribute to your financial life and hear what he will tell you please there is this business idea in my head that's what he's telling you now uh, the last time i went somewhere i saw pigs they were rearing pigs and they sold one in my presence they sold one twelve thousand. it's not here i saw it are you getting what i'm saying now please sir Give me 100,000 and I promise you I will never disturb you again. 99.9% .9 of those people will return in frustration. I tell you the truth. Hallelujah. Look, I have tested this with people too many times. It takes more than business and capital to be prosperous. Are you seeing where we are very deceptive now? It is the same mindset that makes somebody think that getting a job will make him rich look at him after 10 years of working there is nothing to show forth for it if in four months the average worker in nigeria if he does not collect salary for four months he's literally poor and broke is that true a worker that has been working for decades 25 years 15 years 17 years has even risen to a managerial level no salary for as little as three or four months that means something is wrong is God speaking to us? There are many of us, you receive maybe pocket money or, mo or money or whatever. Some of us who are working, you receive your salary. And we believe that all I need to do is to get a job. Oh God, Shell, 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 Chevron, NLNG, CBN. Huh? Or if I become a soldier. Just anything you believe will bail you out. Let me tell you something. 
They say experience is the best teacher, but it must not be your experience. Why don't you find out those who are crying and see where they are walking already? And that should tell you that there must be something more. Is God helping us? There are many of us, as we are seated right here, we are angry with our uncles. We are angry with our aunties because the last time you went, you just went and said, Sir, if you can give me only 20,000, all I need is 20,000. And I swear, that's how many of I swear to you, 20,000 and it's over. Don't ever give me anything again. They gave you 20,000 in three days. You didn't even start the business in the first place. You see that? You didn't even start it. Because most likely with that money, you were paying somebody you were owing. Is God speaking to us, please? The fifth myth that keeps people poor and will continue to keep people poor is what I call entitlement mentality. Everybody say entitlement mentality. Now write it. Entitlement mentality. The feeling that someone somewhere is responsible for your success and prosperity. Entitlement mentality. That feeling that my prosperity is in the hands of my uncle or in the hands of my father. After all, he gave birth to me. If he does not take care of me, God will punish him. The entitlement that government, I'm a citizen of Nigeria. From 18 years, they are supposed to be giving me money. Now I'm 35. Government is owing me for 18 minus 35. That number of years. Entitlement mentality. You see people carrying placards all around. Loitering our streets in Nigeria. Advocating a cause they will not directly benefit from. Because it gives them succor to pass blames. Entitlement mentality. You think one of your uncles or your friend or your pastor or your family. Some of us are angry with our uncles. He's the director of of, of NMPC. What is there to just give me a job? Wicked and stupid man. You see his children, you hate them. They greet you, good afternoon, uncle. Say the day you greet me, I wound you. You are as stupid as your father. Entitlement mentality. There are many of us, don't laugh, oh, there are many of us who hate our fathers and mothers and relatives. You look at where you are sleeping and you look at your father. And you just wish that you would do something wrong and let them arrest him. Just to ease off your pain. This mentality is one of the things that have made us to hate rich people. There is a natural inclination to resent and to hate wealthy people. Because every time you see a wealthy man, it reveals to you that something he has done is what you are looking for so desperately and passionately. And every time you see a wealthy man, that resentment. Hallelujah. Let promise or Michael or Pastor Femi come back next week here and you see a Range Rover Sports parked outside. First and foremost, people will ask, now get this guy. They say, Michael, say, which one? Michael, Michael, that I know. Ah. It's not everything you see that it's just God that really knows what people do. Bible says envy not the wicked. You, you see that? Something about his success has brought pain to you. That's the reason why this cause, this I said, is actually a cause. Hallelujah. It's very important. How many ladies hate others? You love them when they look like you. The day they, they did not look like you, you say, uh -uh. hey, wonder shall never end. When did this lady even afford uh, this and that? I'm sure she has pinned down one man. That's always how they do. What if I'm sure God has blessed her? What if I'm sure her thinking has been straightened out and she's getting it right now? Notice, we tie a lot of negativism to wealth. You never see a man that is blessed, especially a young person. When you see somebody who is almost dying and they tell you he's rich, you know that this guy, even if he's just discipline alone, has taken him through. But you just see somebody of an average age or a young man, you just look and say, no way, something is wrong. See a lady, you say a lady. Many guys will say that. Me, a man, 
How bad? This is an insult. This lady that I know, especially that you knew the person. You see that? Many of us have called our uncles occultists. We have ignored their sacrifices. You just know that the last time he left your house, he left with slippers. Now he came into your house with something and he blessed all of you. Immediately he leaves. Your mother, your father and your uncle sit back and they say, ah, ah, Are you sure this guy is not into drugs or armed robbery? Why do we have to associate wealth with negativism? This is why. Because of our frustration. Secretly speaking, we admire the people we resent in the open. We admire the feats that they have accomplished. And we wonder how they were able to do it. And rather than settling down with all humility to learn the precepts, we resent them as a way of easing out our own pain. Hallelujah. Friends, listen to me. Every one of us seated right here will have to make a choice in the course of this conference. It's more than a meeting. It's truly a conference. Every one of us will have to make a decision whether you want to remain the way you are and keep getting angry at others who are moving using seniority to justify why you should be richer than them or using the fact that you put pampas for them or using all this 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 cultural age-long stumbling blocks that stop people from moving forward or you can choose and say lord i'm face to face with my destiny and i'm ready to confront this what you never confront you will not conquer assumption is the least level of knowledge if you assume you you have your destiny your financial destiny straightened out you are already in error there is a spirit that attacks the message of wealth and prosperity in the body of christ now i know there are imbalances but let me tell you one of the strongest assaults of satan in a congregation is when the message of wealth and prosperity is about to come and he uses spirituality to launch that attack the moment you begin to hear a message like this something shuts you down you are not teaching of prayer or on the anointing or the wisdom of the spirit or levels of spiritual growth or fasting and praying or evangelism you are talking about money and you just shut down that's the devil wanting to destroy your destiny because sooner or later you will find out that it takes more than preaching to have a successful ministry sooner or later you will find out that it takes more than praying in tongues to raise kids is that true every one of us here is suffering or has suffered from at least one or more of these mindsets and right now, before we continue, my job tonight is like a surgeon. There is a surgery that is about to begin. I just gave you this, this um, background. Before I build on what we are going to talk about tonight. I want to teach you something that will change your life forever if you care to pay attention. I am determined. I have made my decision already. But I want to see how that God will help all of us together to come into this decision. How to be wealthy. How to be wealthy. This is how to be wealthy. I want to give you the keys. And I give you a guarantee in the name of the Lord God of heaven. That if you are childlike enough to take these things I'm telling you. You and poverty will part ways forever. It doesn't matter what the limitations are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number one, the first key to really being wealthy is to make the decision to be wealthy. Write that word down, decision. The decision to be wealthy. The decision to be wealthy. 
Brothers and sisters, look at me. You came to Koinonia tonight because you decided to be here, true or false. You would have been in any other place. But right from morning, you had set it that you will be here. And nothing stopped you. No witch from your village appeared on the road and said, go back. Because of the power of your decision. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, there is a difference between a wish and a decision. A wish is a desire. A wish is a craving. Nothing more. Many people wish to be wealthy. You go outside and stand. Hold 1,000 naira notes or 100,000 or a million and wave it and say who wants to have this type all his life? You will be shocked to see all kinds of people come. Embracing that message. Oh, I want to be rich. However, many people think a wish is a decision. No, sir. A decision is a strong desire. Write it down. A decision is a strong desire that is backed up by the willingness backed up by the willingness to pay the price to see that desire accomplished. That's a decision. There is a difference between a wish and a decision. Many of you think you have decided to be blessed. You have, you hate poverty. You like prosperity. But you have not decided. The very first reason. Is God speaking to us? I can prove to you. Excuse me. I can prove to you that you have not made that decision. Show me what you are doing right now in your life to support your decision. You decided to love God and that decision, I can see the things you are doing. I see you running away from a nightclub. That is a sacrifice to honor your decision. Is that true? I see you panting after the word of God. I see you using the money that you should buy shoes and clothes with to buy an electronic device that you can use for your spiritual growth. That is a proof that you have decided. Hallelujah. I've seen you pray and fast for three days, one week, others one month because you want to rise in the level of the anointing. You have decided to contend for the anointing. A decision is never a decision until there is a willingness and a readiness to accept the responsibility that will make that decision come to pass. So many have not decided to be wealthy. They want to be wealthy. Every time they hear success stories, they look and they say, ah, how did you do it? Ken, Ken, Ken. Ah, money like you. You see, all those kinds of cliches. And they turn, they say, ah, Nigeria is good for you, for some of us talk. They have not decided. How many times have you seen a very wealthy man that you have access to? And you came and sat down and bought five alive. Dropped it at the feet of the person and said, I came purposely because I want you to teach me the principles. You are wealthy. I've seen the proof. Other people just come and loiter the gate of rich people with all kinds of pregnant expectations. Hoping that their rent will be paid through the, that coming. And the man drags his wife and their two children as proof to the man that the, the situation is serious and they stand in front of his gate uncle it's me who uh, james which james about why are you treating me like this they see my two children even if it's not for us just for my two children watch this the uncle counts two hundred and fifty thousand. is that not true gives james what does the man tell the uncle thank you foolish man rather than receiving the money to say by the way sir sit on the floor and say junior whatever bring me a paper i want this to be the last time i'm receiving money from you what can i learn they collect the money and say thank you and go and commit the same blunder they did and by next year they are back again <laughs> uncle don't be angry oh. it's me again and some even say do you know it's because of me that 
God is blessing you. you it's because you don't know the prayer I'm praying for you. Pray for yourself like that. You try to make people feel guilty because you think that you have a stake in their wealth. Are you getting what I'm saying? Some of you have very wealthy parents. And you are just hoping that you, when you get to 30 or 40, they will now call you and say, now you're a man, you have three children, this estate is for you. What sort of a dream is that? Everybody say, I decide to be wealthy. It's shocking some of you right now because you are seeing that you have never decided. You decided to get married. Some of you have made a decision, I must marry this year. You gave it a time target, you made a decision. Right now, you are on your fifth marriage book and you will truly marry because you decided to. But you won't be rich because you have not decided to. You hope you will be rich. You pray you will be rich. You wish you will be rich. You beg to be rich. You want to lambano the richness or riches. No matter what Greek and Hebrew word you speak, let me tell you the truth. If you do not know the path to wealth, you will, you will end up in bitter frustration. Hallelujah. Those in school, you are in school today because you decided to be in school. There was a time you looked at that course and you said, Kai. But something in you, it was your decision that made you to run and go and write the exam in the midst of the rain. Your umbrella was missing, but you know 8.30, they may not allow you to enter. That decision sponsored that sacrifice and you didn't apologize to yourself. Decisions are powerful. You preach a salvation message and you give people room and they decide, I want to give my heart to the Lord. And they prove that it's not just a wish by standing up to ignore the shame and the embarrassment. And sometimes you see people stand crying. They mean business with God. You are seated here right now because you decided to sit down. At the point you are tired of sitting, you have every right unhindered to get up and walk out of this place. Is that true? You are only seated here because of your decision. We do this in every other area except our finances because we have been taught that it will happen automatically. You must decide to be wealthy. You can decide to reject poverty. That's not the same as deciding to be wealthy. I made up my mind that I was going to be wealthy that I was going to be blessed. I took out time to make sure it was a decision that I honored. And there is nothing that would change my mind about it. Right here where you are sitting, look at me. If you decide that what you need right now is 2,000 to cure the current hunger, because of that decision, the 2,000 will come. But afterwards, you will be poor. Is that true? But you can decide. And say, I don't know the way. I don't know what to do. I'm clueless about the direction. But start with a decision. All decisions are free. You don't pay for them. That's why every man who is poor has a right to remain poor. Decisions are free. You pay for knowledge. You don't pay for decisions. Is God speaking to us? Decisions are absolutely free. Decisions depend on you alone. They don't depend on the cooperation of another person. So you have no excuse to say, I would have decided, but Kai, the way I saw this guy looking at me, what if I... No, 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 no. no. It's a personal decision. I will. I will. I release my will. I make that choice. I choose to partner with God. I choose to partner with the spirit of wisdom. Lay your hands on your head and say, I decide to be blessed. Say, I decide to end poverty. I decide to be wealthy. I may not know what to do. I may not know how to go about it. I may not know how to come out of my present situation. But I decide 
in the name of the Lord Jesus to be wealthy this looks very simple you only invite God into your financial life when you decide the same way you invited him into your life spiritually speaking when you made the decision behold I stand at the door and what if he knocked your heart to come into your life, he will knock on the door of your finances and remain there until you decide to invite him. You may not know what to do, brothers and sisters, but can you decide? Your father went to school. Your mother went to school. Your father got a job, but they never decided to be wealthy. They decided to get jobs and so they got it. They decided to marry they decided how many children are we going to have one said three one had five they voted majority carries the vote you are five now right because of that decision you decided to wear the dress that you are wearing today no demon in your village i say it again africa no demon in your village showed up in your wardrobe and said this one is my own no as you were picking the shirt no spirit paralyzed your hand because your decisions were honored both by God and the devil. Is that true? You had a choice. We trivialize the power of decisions in our finances. And so you see a lot of people outside. This is how they talk. Kai, when will my story change? Oh God, oh God, that changes stories. That's not a decision. That's a communication of regret and frustration. It's not a decision. Oh, oh Lord, this job, if my arrears comes, ah, my life will change. It's still not a decision. A decision is I have come to the end of my life. I have seen what has happened to my father and my mother. I've seen myself beg my way through life. I have seen the fierceness of society. I have seen the inevitable frustration that comes as a result of poverty and I decide I make up my mind that my life is not going to be this way brothers and sisters you are not drinking today because you decided to there are bars that are open today is Friday true or false there were some of you who were drinking before yes the power of the Holy Spirit came upon you but it did not come upon a hardened heart you could not change yourself but you decided to embrace change and so the change came you may not have the power to change but you have the decision to permit that power to come is god speaking to us say it again i decide to break that barrier of poverty in my family and in my life say i decide that I will be wealthy. I will be blessed. That wealth and riches. Will be in my house. A true decision. Must be set as a goal. What is a goal? A goal is an expectation. A goal is an expectation. A clearly defined expectation. Clearly defined expectation. That's a goal. The moment you, you set it as a goal to marry, if you are not in a relationship, what automatically? It's like your love mode is switched on. And suddenly you can see the difference between Rose and, um, what's her name? Huh? Vicky. You can see the difference between, what's her name? Ada. And all these people, all of a sudden, if you have not decided to marry, you will see everybody as a sister in the Lord, a sister in the vineyard, and all of these kinds of evangelistic things. That dimension will never be activated until you decide. True or false? If you decide to be a competent musician or worship minister, you will begin to discern difference between what you are doing and what they are doing. Otherwise, if you come and you have a general sense, you can sing and go off key and be smiling. You don't even know you've gone off key because there is no passion in that area. You have not set it as a goal. Goals give us focus. 
it 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 weeds away distractions in our lives man can only accomplish what he sets as a goal so every other thing becomes secondary and you focus on that one thing until it is accomplished are you seeing now so if you put it as a goal to be financially blessed the devil tells you this is too carnal how can you put money in front of you like this and say i'm putting it as a goal whereas you do not know that it's a goal that can be accomplished so that it will give you room to focus on more spiritual goals hallelujah i only imagine the times that we will now begin to go on air launch tv ministries now start building structures and facilities for ourselves these structures will cost hundreds of millions and billions of naira if we ignore thank god we're a ministry that is very unapologetic about the reality and the necessity of wealth in building the kingdom and so we have irresponsible fathers a woman gets up she's pregnant but she's going to go and fend for the family and the man who got her pregnant sits down there guiltless right and just living his life hoping she will go and look for money and come back and cook and the man will eat and say kai why i, I thought we used to eat chicken what has happened to the chicken now he did not contribute in any way and he there is no sense of apology he's just waiting for her to give birth to that one and get her pregnant again without any sense because he has not decided he has not seen the relevance of finance in family building help us tonight oh god is god speaking to us please brothers and sisters i want you to not in any way ignore what i'm telling you it won't do me any harm because i've made my decision what i'm doing to you right now is my contribution to stop your tears of the future what i'm doing for you right now is my contribution to help you break that jinx of poverty once and for all so that you can enjoy the abundance that god has prepared for you the first way to be wealthy is to decide to set it as a goal you must set it as a goal there is nothing in life that you will accomplish if you do not set it as a goal you set your degree as a goal and no matter what it is your mind is on it the day you hold your certificate mission accomplished you get another goal you cannot put finances as one of those things and vaguely just say yes yes we'll look at it by god's grace when i start working i'll plan around my finances let me tell you that disrespect that dishonor for wealth will cost you more than you can bargain for i watched my family i've told you my story again and again i came from a very good christian family never been all these boys that go around doing all kinds of things i don't have all those necessary all those kinds of very funny pasts but one thing that i saw both of my parents they are, they are retired now but then both of them worked they started working early my father started working at 26 years brothers and sisters and he's never lost a job but in his old age i saw that man suffer i said well, what is the meaning of this there are many of us right now you sit down and you watch your father and you watch the tears out of his eyes because nothing can be done about the situation your father will go and ask you to borrow 2,000 naira from a neighbor. Somebody who was once a small boy pushing Gere Gere around your street. Now he has become blessed. And your father will say, please tell him, Baba said you should give 2,000. You be the one to go and collect it. You feel guilty. He goes his tongue a thousand times as he counts 2,000 and give you. You go and give your father. You buy something and he returns the change. The lunch and the dinner of that family is dependent on that 2,000. And everybody eats and goes back. And all you do in the night is to cry. Crying does not produce change. It may comfort you emotionally. But you must set it as a goal. I can remember the day in my life I vowed before God that me and poverty, we have drawn the line. 
it was a decision i made up my mind that whatever it would cost me under god to explore what it would take to get out of this thing i never want to look at my children one day and see that i cannot afford to pay school fees for them or i cannot afford to bless them there are so many people imagine brothers and sisters that you came for koinonia and you saw that there were no chairs everywhere is parked and we say brethren um there is a serious financial situation here right now everybody can you contribute whatever you can bring we need to buy fuel we need one jerry can of fuel as a matter of life and death oh apostle has not eaten if you really want to hear anything sensible this night please let's rally around and rush and see how we can come to the rescue You laugh about it and you trivialize it today. May God give you grace to start a ministry and you will respect what I'm saying. You will see how that you can pray and tongues won't come out because you cannot see where the finances will come out. And you stop. You will know when you stop. The load on your head is not demons. You are hearing voices. You are seeing things. That's what makes many of our fathers to be. They didn't start like that. At 40, he's talking to himself. Right? He sees you and calls you by the name of your elder brother. You think it's his fault? Something happened. A load that would have been lifted and thrown away was permitted to sit on his head for a long time. And that's the result. And many of us, as young as we are, that load is already coming subtly. You found out that you used to be kind and nice. Now at 27, see how angry you are at everybody. Welcome. The load is landing. It's like a lift. By the time you are 31, you will hate everybody around you. 40, you hate your wife. 45, you hate your children. 50, you hate yourself. See that? Number two. There is an exact formula for wealth and abundance. That is for next week. Next week, I'm going to be teaching you the formula for wealth. But right now, allow me to be a surgeon as we do a little x-ray just for a few minutes on our minds to help us. For the formula, we'll talk about that. The first way to be wealthy is the decision to be wealthy. Second is to know that there is an exact formula for wealth and abundance. Three, the mental transition that brings wealth. You must understand the mental transition that brings wealth. The mental transition that brings wealth. Guys, come and help me. I think these things have gone. Let's push it forward. Let me have three people here, please. Everybody watch what I'm about to demonstrate. Never forget this for the rest of your life. One here, one here, one here, quickly. I classify people into three in terms of mindsets and transitions. Everybody watch please. You will see yourself right now. There are three types of people based on mindsets versus their physical realities. Generally speaking, listen. Generally speaking, there is a law and this is the law that your physical condition your physical condition today Today, whether you believe it or not, is a reflection of your ideology so far. Your physical condition today is a reflection of your thinking of yesterday. Are you getting me? Your physical condition tomorrow will be a reflection of what you are thinking right now. Your thought process, your mindset, the content of your ideologies. A direct, exact reflection of your thought life and the quality of your mindset. The level of ministry that we are enjoying right now is a direct reflection of what our mindset and understanding about ministry has been. If we never upgrade, this is the level we remain forever. But if we upgrade, then we rise. Your music ministry, your life, whatever it is that is happening in your life, I'm telling you right now, is a messless reflection of your mindset and your ideology. Let's have that in mind. So, 
I look at my life today and all that I see is a reflection of the way I have thought about God, about success, about people, about ministry, about life. There are three people. Watch this. The first type of people that we have are those who have poor mindsets and poor physical realities. Write it. A poor mindset dash poor physical reality. That's the first kind. I'm giving you a classification of people now in terms of wealth. This guy in this example now has a poisonous mindset about wealth. This is the guy that sleeps under the bridge. This is the guy that smokes around. This is the guy that believes that cheating and looting is the way forward. This is the guy angry with his uncle. This is the guy angry with God. This is the guy angry with government. Angry with his boss in office. There is a mindset that he has and there is nothing in his life. He's living a beggarly life. He's living a poor life and he has a lot of contemporaries who are like him. Are you getting my teaching now? All his contemporaries think like him. They think like him. So they all discuss. You hear them say things like, Kai, one day go better. That's the mindset. Poor mentality. They are the ones who borrow to do everything. They borrow to eat. They borrow to buy clothes. They borrow to buy phones. They do everything, borrowing, borrowing, borrowing. And they live perpetually in the course of debt. This is the person. I won't go back. I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me. I won't go back. I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me. This guy is blaming the witches in his village as the reason why he's poor. He's blaming his grandfather that cannot walk and he's saying the way he looked at me when I went to the village. The way his eyes was, that's why I'm poor. Are you seeing that? This guy is blaming his class of degree to why he's poor. This guy is angry with everybody he wants to change he hates rich people he hates blessed people he gossips about them he resents them and he's hoping to be like them paradox could that be you could this be you i'm describing right now i know you are praying in tongues but could that be you that right now the reason why your life has not changed the reason why your pocket is empty listen the biggest difference between the rich and the poor is not money in their pocket money in their pocket is a is a reflection of something going right money in their pocket is a sign that they have gotten something right the money in their pocket their financial abundance is their receipt in the school of wealth it's a sign that they have purchased something true are you getting what I'm saying? Unfortunately, we concentrate on changing our physical reality. This guy, this guy is trekking from pillar to post. This guy is living under a place where there is no roof, maybe an uncompleted building. This guy has been rejected by his family. This guy wants change. He cries every night. Oh God of heaven, will you not wipe my tears? But nothing changes. God seems to be infinitely silent about his situation because he does not know that before he prayed, the prayer had been long answered. God will not answer the same prayer twice. The reason why you hear him silent may be that he answered it before you called. It's only that we have not been trained to know how and when God answers prayers. Is God speaking to us, please? So this is it. This guy does everything. Listen, his mindset is poor. 
So everything in his life is a reflection of it. Give this guy one million naira. Something here will destroy the money. Are you getting what I'm saying? Give him a job in Shell. Something here will eat up the resources. Let his titan open doors for favor. Give him 10 million naira. Let him even win a lottery. Something here will frustrate what is in his physical reality. Are you getting what I'm saying? That she may house. That she may house. Something about his indecision. He will be under pressure and he will sell the house. And use the money to eat it. And robbers will kill him. He will run his mouth to the wrong people. They will beat him and collect the remaining money. And the guy will say, I remember this house was my own. Now they've renovated it. It was his own. No matter what you do to help this man, you waste your time. It's like pouring water in a basket. Hear me? If you really want to help poor people, you don't help them by giving them money. That's why I feel sad. I believe in charity, yo. But the solution to empowering people is not carrying bags of rice and floating around and snapping in front of um, bags of beans and sewing machine and, 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 and uh, uh, opening saloons and so on and so forth. You don't change people like that. All that rendezvous of giving people money. I dash you 20,000. I dash you 50,000. And the person comes and says, Praise the Lord. I was nobody. But see now, they gave me 200,000. Is that what will make you somebody? There is an error. Is someone getting what I'm saying? Now, when this guy sees a wealthy man, this is what he says. If only I was in his condition. The only thing is that my father is a stupid man. When his friends were taking steps, he didn't take, he was drinking. Now he got born again too late. He got born again when he finished the whole money. And he thinks that's the reason. That's the only difference. And so he sees somebody counting money. He's about to buy a car. And he pays cash. And this guy looks and admires him and says, Hi! Life. Thinking that the difference between him and the rich man is just the money in their pocket. Oh, how wrong. How wrong. He thinks the man is rich because he's doing business. And he said, ah, ah, but this guy is rich. He said, no be businessman. He's a businessman. Go and do it. If all there is to wealth is business. Go and do it. There is still demand for more of that line of business he's doing. So go and do it. If you think all there is to wealth is business. Are you seeing the balance now that I'm giving many of us? Because all through, there are many of us, the moment they talk about finance, you just suit up and you just think CEO. <laughs> Calm down, it's not CEO. It's right here. Your mindset. Everybody say my mindset. My understanding. God wants to step into his life and change his story. But they limited the Holy One. His mindset. He has not made the decision to be blessed. He does not care. He only wants things to change. This man does not want to take responsibility for his destiny. All he wants is let friends, in-laws, cousins give him money and now as a result of that frustration the day his daughter starts going out with an unbeliever so long as he's getting money he does not mind let her go to hell so that i will get money it doesn't matter many in the body of christ are here favor when it comes to this life is like one million times zero because favor comes to hit a rock so God has been sending in favor to this man when he does calculation of all the monies and the opportunities that has come. This man, because of his mindset, he does not know the law of honor. And so all the destiny helpers that come into his life, he throws them away because his mindset is destroying him. Is God speaking to us? I'm not just talking about money. He meets a rich man, has access to that man for two weeks. And he's there licking his mouth, waiting for the last day when the man will leave so that he will count 50,000. Because his mindset does not teach him that until here is changed, your hand cannot change. That's why the first dimension of the anointing for wealth, hear me, is not to give you money. Thou anointed my head with oil. There is a reason why it's your head, it starts with first. Thou anointest my head with oil something must happen to your head for your cup to run over 
Why didn't he say, Thou anointed my hand? I thought you hold cup with your hand. Thou anointed my head. There is an anointing that needs to do something here for my cup to start running over. My cup is at the mercy of my head. So the Bible says, Ye have an unction from the Holy One. He said, That anointing can teach you. That anointing can teach you. The anointing does not just give you power to gyrate around and say, I have the Esther anointing. Whether you have Deborah's anointing, Esther anointing, uh, Jennifer's anointing, it's not going to do anything. Brothers and sisters, the transition. Something about his mindset, resisting God and his resisting money. Here he's waiting for God to come and change his life. I will wait till my change comes. He doesn't know what he's saying. No. He thinks he knows. I will wait. He justifies that the reason why he's here is because God wants him to be here. Whereas that is the wealthy place. Are you getting me? Now, watch the transition. The first mindset is what? Poor mindset, poor physical reality. Nothing in him is changing. Watch this. The moment this guy watch this please everybody just look up before you write the moment this guy decides that i am tired of my life i'm tired of the status quo there's gotta be more than this come on now you you, you step home and immediately you get home you see your mother crying you see your father crying and you say enough is enough that's a decision that, that's a defining moment for desperate people do desperate things and we press in there's gotta be more gotta be more there's gotta be more than this. you are here praying in tongues fasting a prostitute sleeps with somebody overnight brothers and sisters a woman who is going to hell and the next day she wakes up a millionaire and here is somebody praying and fasting in tongues and the heavens are closed is God that wicked is that the God they taught you something is wrong we're tired of the status quo there's gotta be more than this for many years in my life let me tell you I cried and cried to the God of heaven I said, Lord, you've got to change my situation. But this is where I was standing. I've loved God all my life. I've served God all my life. I've given my entire life to God. But nothing changed in my life. I saw myself rising spiritually. People liked me. The hand and the anointing of the Spirit was strong upon my life. But this financial mountain refused to move. I fasted for days. Dry fasting. All kinds of fasting. I prayed. Nothing changed. The first book that will begin to give me an idea that there was something wrong I was doing in my life was Discovering Your Purpose by Miles Munro. It was not a book on finances, but it, it planted a seed and I said something is wrong. Something is wrong. I listen it takes humility to break out of poverty if you are there arrogantly explaining yourself the bible says creation is waiting for the manifestation not the explanation i i remember that night when i cried to the lord of heaven i said lord you've got to do something about my life you have shown me visions of my assignment i'm not confused about my assignment i cried to god I cried to God and that was when I made up my mind the Spirit of God never spoke anything to me in terms of oh thou my son stand up wipe your tears God didn't say anything the only word that God spoke to me was as for the ancient parts right as for the ancient parts that's what the Spirit of God told me as for the ancient parts and he stopped there I said, God, what is the meaning of this? That's not the kind of solution. Because you can imagine, with my mind, all I was thinking about was money to suck all the current hunger first. Before we even talk of destiny. Destiny is, you know, when you are alive. As for the ancient parts, 
That's what the Holy Spirit told me. He didn't say ask for the future part. The revelation of that was, Son, why do you want to discover what has been found? Why are you asking me to answer a prayer I answered before you were born? My silence is because I do not answer the same prayer twice. It's against the law of my majesty. Once have I spoken, it's you that will hear twice. And I made up my mind. I began to search the word. And I fell into the teachings of Bishop David Oyedeko. May God bless him. May God honor him in life and in death. It began to revolutionize my mind. I said, wow. I never knew. I was never taught tithing. I was never taught this. I began to explore from there the materials of Kenneth Hagin. I started reading a lot of business. I bought tons and tons of business books. I read any and everything that had to do with finances. And the moment I started doing that, I couldn't make sense out of what I was reading. The only thing I knew was that I was the one who was responsible for where I was. I remember standing that night and saying, Lord, I take responsibility. I stop blaming people. I stop hating people. I make up my mind. Today, I know what I did. This was it. A transition. Are you getting what I'm saying? The transition from a poor mindset and a poor physical reality does not start by changing your physical reality. It starts by the decision for your mindset to change. Like many of you, many of you are this man standing right now. Something needs to change. And if any prayer would be prayed this night is that the anointing of the Spirit will come upon you so that your cup will run over. Now watch this. This guy, yes, he's sitting like you right now, listening to me teach. And all of a sudden, he makes up his mind. I'm tired of where I am. Watch this. I am ready for change. Do you know the first thing that will happen? That decision, that decision will experience a war in his mind. Look up, look up everybody. Something in him will reject the decision he's trying to make. The old man, the old wine skin is fighting something about to come. The moment you make a decision, there will be war in your mind. Your old mentality will say, what are you doing? That's why they sang that song, I'm coming out of my comfort zone. Because it's the zone you are comfortable with. You have blamed government. Right now, this is what that decision will do to you. When you stand, other friends will come and say, Pastor Femi, Aluta, continue, let's keep struggling. And say, no. I've made a decision. The first mistake, or not mistake really, the first challenge you will start experiencing. Your friends will say, something about you is changing. You are not looking like us. Are you getting me? They will start fighting you. They will start making you feel that the decision you are taking is a foolish one. You too, you will see the mountain and say, when will I get there? But make the decision. Watch this. Sooner or later, a mindset, this transition is, is coming to Pastor Femi. Now, initially he would not wash his clothes. He would wear any dirty thing and live like that. But that mindset is already, something is shifting. He's sleeping under the bridge. He's wearing a dirty cloth. He's going to start washing his clothes now. The next time he appears with his clothes washed and ironed, his friends, something in his mind is now pushing him and saying, you don't belong here anymore. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He will start feeling it. This level starts pushing him away because the transition has started. It will start with persecution. It will start with gossip. This is the pushing away. He's saying, we are secretly acknowledging that you are rising. We are trying to bring you down. But your determination is too great. So we persecute you out of this realm. We drive you out of this realm. Everybody sings the song. You just write every song and you are thinking, let me go and wax an album. And you hear a message about excellence and being world class. And you settle down and say, I'm packing up any project of album or anything. I'm not producing anything. I'm giving myself two years of intense rehearsal and training. All your friends say, are we ready to go to the studio? Say, sorry, I use the money to go and 
enroll in a music school. They will hate you. As you begin to learn about ad lipping, voice control, vocal discipline, what happens? A shift is happening. You are still here, but gradually something is moving you. The way you think. When they are gossiping, you are quiet. Very soon you find out that you can no longer connect with them. It's a sign that the plane has started lifting. A transition is happening. You are still poor, but something is changing. You are moving to this second person. This second person is a wealthy mentality, but a poor physical condition. Wealthy mentality. So now you have left the realm of a poor mindset, poor physical condition. You are now a wealthy mindset, but still a poor physical condition. This is the hardest part of the journey to wealth, where there is a paradox. There are two realms fighting within you. In your mind, you are already a rich man. You have read the books, but physically, nothing is showing yet. This is where many people give up because we beguile ourselves into thinking we are not making progress. You do not know that you have left here. Here, when you talk to a rich man, you talk like him. You are already happy because your mindsets are similar. When you talk to a blessed man, he says you are smart. You are going far. But your physical reality is still poor. When you talk to a poor man, he hates what you are saying, but he can live with you because your physical... So, you are in between the wealthy place and the place of poverty. And this is where great men fall. Because you are asking, oh God, I've been praying. No, you are reading the books. You are hearing the seminars. You are still eating the same thing you were eating. But brother, you are changing. You are no longer where you used to be. This is where a few of us who have taken some decisions are. Here and there, things are already working. Little money comes in. One little breakthrough. People are already recognizing your paradigm. But the truth is you are still physically speaking when they join you and this guy there is no difference but there is a difference is god speaking to us i won't go back i can't go back to the way i used to be before your presence came and changed me hallelujah many of us are here right now at this point there is no physical cash to prove the way you talk is a lonely path because the rich cannot come to you and the poor will run away from you so you are alone mentally speaking you are here physically speaking you are here are you getting what i'm saying and that shift is very constraining you are still experiencing failures here and there but people do not know that the change has happened. When they see you, they call you with what you used to be or what they know you as. There is no way you can prove to them you have left their realm. Don't be under pressure to prove any point. The system itself will prove the point. Have you ever been taught this? That you are learning? Have you been taught this? This was a revelation that the Holy Spirit gave me. I didn't read it in any book. I wrote it down as he was dictating it for me. The transitions. That it all starts right here. Pray and fast at this level. If you do not make a decision and allow the Holy Spirit to change your mind. You are moving nowhere my brother. Get a job in NMPC at this level. Nothing significant will happen. I guarantee you in the name of the Lord. Right here. You do not have results. But here and there, there are consolations you are receiving. Watch this. At this point, when you continue doing what brought you from here to here, and add a few other things that I'll be teaching us next week. What brought you from here to here is not the same thing that will take you from here to here. There are some things you will add to it from here that will take you to the wealthy place. And so it says, Thou hast caused men to ride upon our heads. We walk through water and through fire. But thou broughtest us into a wealthy place. I announce to you that there is a wealthy place. There is the place that is beyond your place of birth. There is a place that is beyond suffering and financial hardship. Many are unwilling to pay the price. Watch this. 
many people in this area try to dress like that man to prove that they are there but their mindset betrays them they try to buy his kind of house and it strangles them they try to take their children to his children's school and it strangles them many in this place some of you here are giving people an impression you are there whereas this is where you are there must come a time in every man's life where you must take responsibility and humble yourself and stop lying if you are not a millionaire you are not if you show me one million naira i'm not interested because it's as deceitful as a piece of paper your mindset will prove to me whether you can show me that next year or that will be the last time you will show me one million naira never get impressed when somebody shows you a car or a house let him show you his mindset and then you will know whether he can preserve what he has carried i can dash you money i can dash you a mindset i can dash you house favor comes but the benefits of favor is built through wisdom the bible says through wisdom not through prayer not through favor favor brings the blessings lack of wisdom drives it away favor brings the rain your mindset is like a basket you keep it outside and all through the rainy season you lift it up and the only thing you have is a wet basket a foretaste but not the reality my altar is calling you oh god my sacrifice is calling you oh god my pain is calling you oh god my decision is calling you oh god my seriousness is calling you oh god take my praise oh god take my praise oh god take my praise take my praise it's calling you take my praise take my praise it's calling you i look at my life today and i am humbled i was shedding tears this afternoon as i turned back to look at where god has brought me from and i said god you are faithful and god said no i'm not just faithful you too you are faithful it was our faithfulness together i know that sounds very religious but it took my embracing his faithfulness to take advantage of it I will never be poor again for the rest of my life till Jesus comes. It's not a confession. It's not something I'm trying to claim. I signed out honorably never to return to that realm again. No matter what happens to the economy of Nigeria, there's no returning again. You can make that decision. It starts with a decision, not a wishing. Not saying, ah, it's better for some people. No. There was a time in this ministry, Pastor Jax is here. The first time we were going for our crusade, brothers and sisters, believers came together and raised money. We did not have money to pay the hotel, the hotel where we would lodge. We saw all kinds of miracles on the crusade ground, but it did not change our financial status. Let me tell you, I was almost being locked in the prison because. The sound people, we could not pay them. How much? 150,000. I will never forget. I lay down in frustration. I remember one of my friends in frustration signed a check of 90,000 for me. I was so happy. I gave the sound people. They went to the bank and the check bounced. And they returned back in anger and they said, look, we are coming to arrest you. I said, Lord, if they arrest me, it's for the gospel. My altar is calling you, oh God. My sacrifice is calling you. 
I was in community market, your core market, your core market. I've eaten there. I know that I don't know how it is now, but I know that place very well. Where you buy food and you don't order pure water. Pure water was a luxury. What for? When there is water in that jar. You order garia soup and 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 no meat. 30 naira exactly. I remember telling the woman, please don't embarrass me here. This is what I have. I didn't ask for meat. As you are laughing, I hope you are seeing the seriousness in what I'm communicating. This ministry will never be poor forever till Jesus comes. Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and I will forever sing your praise. Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word and I will forever sing your praise. I will sing, I will sing of the wonders of your word. I will sing out for joy. I will sing of the wonders of your word. And I will forever sing your praise. Listen, when God opens your eyes and gives you the key, you come into a realm of dominion. I don't care what is happening in your life right now. Let me tell you something. I submit to you with all humility. I know what it means to be poor. And I know what it means to be blessed. I can show you how to get there. I may not boast to know all, but I can show you something that can take you out of where you are. Next week, I'm going to be sharing with us the formula. In the last one year of my life, I have learned more. In fact, let me tell you, compared to the things I learned in the last one year, I looked at myself, I said, Joshua Selman, what, what have you, I have spoken in, 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 in financial conferences. I have spoken in business meetings. But the thing that the Lord opened my eyes to and God connected me to uncommon mentors. Uncommon mentors. Some dead, some alive. Uncommon mentors whose words are like the words of God. When you watch a master do something, the proof of mastery is ease. You will tear down the mysticism Hallelujah. This is where many of us are. You are under pressure to do business because you think it will hurriedly take you to the wealthy place. Calm down. You notice we have not mentioned business. We have not even mentioned money many times. We are talking of mindsets. There is a surgery God is doing. And right here, brothers and sisters, is your dream come true. Right here is mission accomplished. Right here, is the realm where you do not think about money again. Right here is the realm where you can serve God with peace of mind. Right here, the name is the wealthy place. The place where few have come is a place of rest. You enter your financial Sabbath. Right here is the place where high blood pressure will not kill you again. Right here is the place where no matter the stress of your village people or you financially, it will be inconsequential. Right here is the place where you will serve God and fund your assignment and do that which God has called you to do in peace. It's called the wealthy place. This is God's destiny. This is God's desire to transit you. And my job in this series is to attempt with the cooperation of your seriousness and your diligence to show you the path that transits you from there to here. Because there is a wealthy place. 
there is no fear here because you did not get your wealth by crooks and pranks now you will understand the definition of my the my definition of financial prosperity not just the ability to have abundance but the ability to be able to replenish to multiply and to sustain its availability at this point you have the keys hallelujah right there where you are seated looking at me has anything i've said tonight made any kind of sense to you that there is need for you to live where you are every one of us is one of these three most of us very few if at all are here for the most part those who have paid attention significantly to their finances are right here and many people right here in koinonia and in the world are here they have camped here they are lying down there with no hope of rising yet in their minds they are deceitfully convincing themselves that one day it go better they are hoping that the day their grandmother dies there will be a sudden transition they are hoping that the day their enemy somewhere falls down and dies there will be a transition immediately if you are in that category let me announce to you before time save yourself heart shattering disappointment and embrace the pathway that vetoes any covenant and any ancestry that vetoes any yoke any spell i don't care who is invoking what there are two ways to bind satan one is by prayer the other is by knowledge your obedience itself will judge every disobedience. Write this down. The major difference between the poor and the rich is their decision to prosper, comma, their mindsets the major difference between the poor the rich and the poor is their decision to prosper comma their mindsets their mental conditioning comma and their comprehension of the true formula for wealth and abundance i'm going to be teaching you that next week. i will show you in plain terms the shocking formula that is responsible every single millionaire and billionaire you see except it's a crook but anybody through the dignity of kingdom integrity who has risen you will see it stare at you at the face i tell you next week some of you will shed tears like this because you will say my goodness my goodness is this it hallelujah your mindset I like you to say in the name of Jesus my mentality must change in the name of Jesus I allow my mindset to be changed in the name of Jesus I allow the power of God and the mind of Christ to superimpose my mindset in the name of Jesus, I declare that I'm on my way unstoppably to the wealthy place. Say one more time, I'm on my way to the wealthy place. In the name of Jesus, I make a decision that I will never stay poor. I make up my mind. Let this be the first step tonight into the wealthy place if i'm serious with god when it's time to chop in the office my conscience will not allow me chop that's a joke is it that god cannot bless you must you bribe to rise that's how everybody is doing it you are lying that's not how every that's how you know or you have been taught that everybody is doing it 
Elijah said, I'm the only one. God said, keep quiet. There are 7,000 others who have not bowed to Baal. Please hear me. There are people here. God wants to visit your family, but there is no one in your family who is born again. And you will be the first tonight because God needs an access point to your family. The system of the kingdom is such that God must find a portal within a territory to manifest his purposes within that territory. If and when God does not find a man, his power is still limited. There must be an individual through sacrifice and alignment who will be able to host the purposes of the kingdom within a sphere to allow the possibilities of God find expression. So if God wants to come to your family, he moves everywhere and everybody says, I'm, I'm, I'm too busy. He comes to your mother. She says, I'm too busy looking for money. He comes to your father. I'm too confused to give my life to you. Comes to your brother. No, I'm, I'm too, I'm too, I want to marry now. God, please go somewhere. He comes to your sister. I'm looking for men. There's no time to look for God. And God says, I want to step into this family. No one has given me space. If God can find one person, he, he needs to take it step by step. When he finds you, the prophetic implication of your relationship starts judging the powers of darkness one by one. And before you know it, someone starts having a strange dream in your family. He lies down and he has a dream of rapture. He won't share it, but that dream will torture him till he thinks about it. He will get up alone and you'll find out for the first time he didn't steal money again. He saw angels. He saw the white throne. He doesn't need to know what it is. His spirit has been designed to recognize spiritual things. But tonight, you must come genuinely to Jesus. Don't come out here if you are playing games. It has, let me tell you the implication of coming out here. You must be ready to scatter and destroy wrong, dangerous and ungodly relationships by the grace and the spirit of God. You just need the will. The grace is what you receive here. Number two, you must be ready and willing to be committed to the house of God to grow. This dilly-dallying with God is the recipe for failure. I'm too young to reject God. The fierceness of life will destroy me if at my level in life I claim I'm too big for God. Before we continue tonight, I'm going to count one to ten. Listen, everyone heard me loud and clear. Overflow outside, overflow along the road. As I'm speaking to you, the Holy Ghost is probing you. Those of you standing on the fence there, I see you. And the Lord is speaking to you online. Probably you are listening now or following from another nation of the world. And you are saying, but I'm far. Distance is no barrier. It doesn't matter. You are still on earth everyone on earth will be judged whether you are in london whether you are wherever i'm going to make this altar call now i want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come to jesus i know you will be healed young and old i don't care how long you have been you are saying lord i'm tired of living my life the way i want i want to hand it genuinely inside outside start running one to ten one Genuinely run like there's fire on the mountain. Two. Nina Yesu ne bazanko bazanko so keep coming don't say there's no space even if you have to line up outside no problem this is your salvation with god greater than any miracle tonight just find somewhere to stand if the place is full keep lining up there right outside five someone is still thinking about it and saying apostle i'm a nice person have never done anything wrong it's just that i've not declared jesus join them by the self-righteousness of no man can he be saved you didn't do anything wrong but that very nature of darkness is resident upon you 
all of you who are standing here please don't look at anyone lift your voice in one minute and begin to talk to jesus everyone who is standing stretch right outside and those online talk to jesus right now and say jesus i come to you i come to you pray talk to him and everyone seated i expect you to be praying for someone's salvation you know everybody around you cannot be saved there is somebody somewhere still hardened towards the things of god lift your voice and cry to jesus lord i'm saved but my father is not saved he's on his way to hellfire and i know it my mother is not saved i know today that if the trumpet sounds they are going to hell for sure i know my sister is not saved my husband is not saved my wife is not saved my colleague in office is not saved lord i know that pastor is not saved he has a church but he's not saved pray cry your heart to jesus he is here much miracle service you are meeting with the savior he wants to reveal himself first as savior before deliverer before healer hallelujah hallelujah all of you standing stretched to the outside please look at me i see you some of you are crying sincerely from your heart listen there is no man who has the power and authority to condemn you young and old i don't care what you have done i don't care how your life is we are all products of his mercy and grace are you hearing what i'm saying don't let any man point an accusing finger but then you cannot remain where you are there are people standing here and say man of god if you will lead me to pray i will i will love it i've been praying for an opportunity like this but there are powers always keeping me wherever you are inside outside don't mind who is looking at you lift your right hand to heaven and you're going to say this prayer after me please it is not a poem it is a genuine genuine prayer meaning from the depth of your heart it says i am not ashamed of the gospel why for it is the power of god unto salvation the lord wants to give you a new beginning i know you came to be healed but he wants to take over your destiny with your hands lifted to jesus who is here not in heaven right here in this place say after me passionately and sincerely say lord jesus i love you with all my heart this night i have heard your word and i make up my mind that from tonight and for the rest of my days i will live for you i will serve you without shame without fear without going back this night i hand over my life to you say it again i hand over my life to you be my lord be my savior i declare that the power of sin of satan of the flesh is broken every association that is not of god I'm separated from them this night. I declare that the joy of salvation and the peace and a new beginning is mine from today. I am a child of God and I will live for him forever. Hallelujah. Keep your hands lifted. Jesus, look at the ones you died for. When you hung upon that cross, you saw them. And today we are glad to present them to you. This is why you put this meeting together. We lift them up as trophies. Worthy trophies for your blood. Worthy trophies for your death. And Lord, I decree and declare that these ones you have brought tonight, none will be lost. 
I speak over your life the joy of salvation that very few people know about may it be your inheritance today I declare that the peace that surpasses all understanding let it be yours today I declare that every guilt the devil uses against you every accusation will roll it away right now in the name of Jesus I declare your sins forgiven by the mercies of God I declare that you have a new beginning with God you are empowered by the Spirit to live a victorious life in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen let's appreciate them keep standing everyone I'll give you some instructions now now there are so many of you probably hundreds of you this is what I want you to do um, protocol please help coordinate let's do it this way those of you who are in the second overflow the overflow right from the door that leads to the road as you go out please let's have some of the ushers you stand so they can attend to you there what will happen is they are going to have your details I know you are all so many but we want your details we have a system to follow you up and to make sure you are grounded in God that's number one that's the first instruction so those outside those here at the overflow and those inside you may not need to go out just wait where you are and someone will come to attend to you please I hope the relevant departments are listening so that we can respond to them very quickly we have five ten minutes for this because I'll start praying for the sick now praise the Lord now the second instruction I want to give all of you is this the Bible says they that be planted in the house of God it says they shall flourish it is important not only for you to just get born again but to be planted in the house of God instruction number three is we have a system of spiritual growth here in Koinonia It's a very large house so what we do is that anyone who gets born again automatically we transfer them to our prayer department for one month whether or not you will continue as a member in the prayer department the prayer department meets Tuesdays 4 p.m. just at the church uh, when you walk from this road right down Rema Chapel more information will be communicated to you and so we usually have all um, new converts to be part of the prayer department there you get to be filled with the Holy Spirit and you have seasons of prayer to build your spirit and it helps you to cultivate a culture of the word and also to have a kingdom community that supports your spiritual growth all these things are very important for your growth I don't want you to waste this experience praise the Lord I bless you in the name of Jesus and shortly the Lord is going to be turning your life around in greater dimensions so let's do this very quickly appreciate them as they go just guide them whether or not you belong to any department you're a member of koinonia you see any of them moving just guide them as they go out quickly let's honor them koinonia as they do so is that the best you can do hallelujah Please coordinate them, coordinate them. Let's just give them some room so that they can go out and then we will shake off every power of darkness roaming around anybody's life. I never see anyone like you. I never see anyone like you. Hey, I never see anyone like you. Where's Sam? Help me. I never see anyone like you. 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 I never see anyone like you.
everyone stand up let's pray some prayers before let's pray some prayers while they are working on the people everyone say after me in the name of Jesus please say be serious in the name of Jesus father tonight visit me this is my destiny give me strange results lift your voice and begin to pray visit me in the name of Jesus visit me step into my destiny step into my destiny step into my destiny hallelujah in the name of Jesus shout it again in the name of Jesus every long-standing issue in my life and my destiny I declare that you must give way tonight lift your voice and begin to pray long-standing challenges are you praying tonight? Long standing issue. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, if you can, pair yourselves into two and pray this prayer. If you are holding a child or you are doing something, that's all right. Otherwise, find somebody, a serious neighbor, hold a hand. I want you to agree. Say, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that the door for the next level of my life and that of my neighbor must be open now lift your voice and pray agree if any two shall agree as touching believe in what you are saying you are opening doors Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are still holding your hands. Say in the name of Jesus. Father, tonight, take away shame. Take away mockery from my life, my family, and my neighbor. Lift your voice and pray seriously. Roll away the reproach. Roll away the reproach of mockery. Roll away the reproach of shame. Roll away the reproach. Pray. Roll away the reproach. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. Father, expose every force, every yoke, every spirit 
behind the tragedies in my life in my destiny and my family expose them tonight lift your voice and pray for the light shines in darkness pray for the light shines in darkness let your light shine oh God Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Lord, let your anointing, let your unction locate me tonight and turn my life around. Lift your voice and pray that the power of God must locate me. Change my destiny. Let your power pray. One encounter with the anointing of the Holy Ghost can wipe your tears, my brother, my sister. Pray. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like menorah. Light me, Lord. Listen, listen to me. I will just give you an instruction. Just help those under the anointing. But listen to me carefully, please, everyone. Do you know the reason why we minister deliverance? Listen, listen carefully. You have to understand this. The reason why we minister deliverance, you don't spend your whole life going through deliverance. However, there are lives come, my dear. When a spirit, listen carefully, when a spirit latches onto your life and destiny, brothers and sisters, let me tell you, I don't care what you do physically. Remember spiritual intelligence. You can be doing the right physical things, but the presence of a spirit representing an embargo, representing a covenant, an authorization for your doom will keep you down there and you find out that your life will never open up when people gather like this hear me they come with prayer requests they come with problems but you see behind those problems are spirits are we together now the spirits that are responsible for lack of favor the spirits that are responsible for a hard life the spirits that are responsible for infirmity all kinds of cases you know one of our dear people here in the ministry 
I prayed over the father's picture. I've seen those kinds of cases on television and all of that, but you could look at the leg and see the bone. The bone, the flesh had eaten to a point that you could see the bone. What happened to the man? He went to bed in the night. Brothers and sisters, I think somebody did something for him in a dream and he woke up physically and his legs started eating up. The Bible says the whole world lieth in wickedness. You want to move forward but there is an embargo. The solution is not counseling. You need an encounter with power. Everybody say power. Listen, the power of the Holy Spirit is not a negotiator. It's an enforcer. When the power of God comes, it does not ask you whether you want to be free. Your assignment is to be open till it reaches you. When it comes, it scatters anything that does not look like God. Lift your hands, everyone. Just lift your hands and be silent. I will pray for you now. The Spirit of God is upon me. Lift your hands, everyone. There are people here right now. I want you to bring there the first sets of people who will come out. Usher's grace for you and protocol. I know you have a lot of work today because there's such a crowd right to the road. But I want to pray. Everyone, please lift your hands. The Lord is speaking to me. There are people right now in your silence. Hold on. Maybe just this. The power of God will begin to come upon you. What is happening right now before we pray for the sick is massive deliverance. That deliverance is equal to breakthrough, equal to new levels. But lift your hands. There are people here who are under strong yokes of delay. And the Lord gives me an instruction. We will just lift our hands and be silent. That's all the instruction. And inside and outside, the Spirit of God will begin to locate them. Are we together? When that happens, then we'll take it off from there. That's the first thing God wants to do tonight. Just lift your hands, everyone. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is asking me to stretch my hands. And there are people and families and those following on, online. Except you are not under the influence of the spirit of delay. That spirit must leave you. Are we together? So keep your hands lifted. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, wherever they are right now, I stretch my hands. According to the instructions you have given me, inside and outside. Right now, I see the anointing of the spirit already falling over the spirit of delay. Keep your hands lifted shalakataya bring them out outside there just the angels of the lord are walking i'm seeing like smoke just moving across lines line by line inside and outside when it comes to you when you are under that influence that's the end of it right now i command it the word of the lord is upon this prophecy in the name of jesus no instruments don't play anything outside there is massive deliverance happening separation from delays separation from delays bring them out thank you jesus delays you want to move forward but the spirit ties you down it's over right now no you can't dodge it you are under an atmosphere there is an influence the influence of the spirit line by line the holy ghost is moving row by row there is no faking it line by line lord every row every line every individual let no one in this category escape it for the sake of your mercy and your grace no matter where you are inside and outside online don't worry the spirit of god is moving one by one it must catch up with you the word of the lord is upon it Bring them out young old destinies that have been delayed tonight there is serious grace for deliverance those of you lifting up your hands be sensitive be sensitive we're in a prophetic atmosphere right now bring them i see people outside kai my god 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 
many people many people many people many people there's someone you are following from kenya you are watching from a laptop the anointing your hands are shaking the spirit of the lord is upon you judging every darkness tonight you will be located by god you prayed it you must be free please help the ushers if there are too if there are too few protocol join them different departments help them the lord really wants to set people free it's a year of triumph don't think these people are just coming out for show they represent breakthroughs these are the people who god wants to give testimonies darkness raging over the lives of people they came from different places how will god leave them that way right now all of you in front here i decree and declare to those spirits at the count of three let them go you know my voice one two three go 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 out of their lives now out now i command you by the influence of the spirit i decree and declare let their destinies go delay broken go now hallelujah now lift your hands my god you'll be surprised at what will happen now Everyone say after me in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. The grace for open doors right now. Break every chain in my life. Keep your hands lifted. Watch it happen now. That's the instruction God gave me. That grace breaking chains now. I'm speaking across the congregation. I have been seeing this for weeks. But locks opening in the realm of the spirit. That's what the Lord is showing me. But locks opening, opening, opening right now. Open them. I'm under the shadow of yours. Your influence is all over me. I'm under the shadow of yours. Your influence is all over me. I'm under the shadow. Your influence is all over me. Oh, lift your hands. Lift your hands. Fire is coming on 32 people and this fire that is coming upon them is to break family altars. I hear family altars right now. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, one, two, three, I set those altars now on fire. Right now, 32 people I see in the realm of the spirit. I command it right now. I command it. Everyone on this ground, under the influence of any altar, now be free now. Help them, please. Help that lady. Be free now. So Right now, be free now. Be free now. Your influence is all over me. I'm under 
It's the shadow of your own. Everyone lift your hands. Say this after me in the name of Jesus. Please say it seriously. Say in the name of Jesus. Any spirit that has had access to my life and is causing destruction hear the word of the lord as i shout the name jesus i command you to live my life at the count of three shout jesus there will be an exiting of many strange spirits one two three shouting i command spirits you go now you go now you go now you go now inside and outside any spirit resident within any man's life any woman's life causing pain help me say as I pray for grace for you in Jesus name because what I see now is not a nice scene the Lord is asking me that we shout Jesus there are people who are going to vomit physical things that's why I said it's a messy scene I, I apologize we are very neat and organized people inside and outside but in the name of Jesus right now any stranger in your body at the count of three must go out now one two three i command every stranger go now every poison every devil causing sicknesses every fibroid every devil every enchantment Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a vision of a lady. If you're here, I want you to come out. I'm seeing your family doing something like a sacrifice, and they are giving somebody everybody a substance, like a drink, something to take. They gave everybody, including you, and you took it. Where is that person? Please, if you're here, I want you to come out quickly. It's a is a highly diabolic thing they gave everybody. Where are you? Come. Your deliverance comes now. I'm under the shadow of your wings. Help me. Your influence is all over me. Let's have another mic, please. Hold on. Stand up, my dear. Is this the lady? Two of them? Stand up. Where are you from? Look at me. Huh? Kogi State. What happened to you? Hold on. I converted. Hold on. I'm looking at you, Kai. This thing. You entered a covenant. Huh? Yes. With who? I don't know my mother. I don't know. They she brought somebody, and you people entered a covenant, and they gave you something. Hold my hands. Shout Jesus. Jesus. I command that covenant, Jesus. that demonic thing, time your life. In this miracle service, it lives now. In the name of Jesus. You too. Where are you from? I'm from Kogi State. You are from Kogi State. The same thing. Hold my hands. Look at me. I command that devil to leave you now whatever yoke please don't come out if I don't call your case are you part of them mr. man young man you're part of them in the name of Jesus I set you free bring the, you, you two. come make sure that so that we don't get the place rowdy be delivered now help her out be free now out I'm interested in this lady please stand up my dear if you can this lady's whole family is in bondage whole family the entire family nothing is working in your family 
the Lord wants to deliver you right now hold my hands I command that spirit your time is up leave this family now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I break the yoke over your life now out now there is a lady you have been coughing blood where are you you are coughing literally and blood is coming out there is a lady like that please where are you let's hurry up we have a lot to do this night the Lord is asking me to minister to a lady that coughs and then blood you cough blood who is that inside outside except you are under the anointing please come out quickly I want to pray for that person now where are you how long hold on just just keep up where's the mic how long you you are an usher you how long three weeks. Eh? Three weeks. for three weeks you've been caught lay your hand on your chest you too lay your hands on your chest you too huh substance your what hold on please guys hold on yours is what the substance you spoke about what substance lift your hands lift your hands lift both of them i'm seeing an angel pouring something on your hand your hand will start shaking and then the lord is bringing you strange deliverance it will start from your hands down to your body i place the word of god upon your life right now in the name of jesus christ both of you look at me both of you cough out blood in the name of jesus i lay my hands upon you it ends now in the name of jesus out right now there are spirits responsible for this kind do you know what i just saw the lord opened my eyes and i saw like a cage and in the cage i saw snakes that's all i'm seeing that's all i'm seeing lift your hands everybody the lord is just asking me to wave my hands over the congregation there are people who represent that oppression it will leave now the lord is asking me to wave my hands lord as you have said i see snakes in cages whose destiny is that right now whose destiny is that i wave my hands in the name of jesus please release them for your glory release them now help them please jesus christ inside outside be out of that cage now I see snakes, serpents. Some of you see them in your dreams. They must go now. They are leaving you now, now. They are leaving you now. I command liberty, liberty. Liberty. Hallelujah. I'm hearing a name, Jane. Jane, like J-A-N-E. Jane. 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 I'm also hearing another name, Victory. Is it Victory? Like Victory. Victory. Please don't come out if that's not your name. What's your name? Jane. Your name is Victory. Where are you from? Delta State. Delta State. I have to pray for you. Your family is being seriously oppressed. Why are you people here? You are all Jane. Jane, your name is Victory. I want to pray for you. Kaza Chat. Kaza Chat. Is it Kaza Chat? Who is that? Kaza Chat. I'm hearing that name. That's that's like a Kaduna name. Kaza Chat. Please, who is that? The breakthrough of your family has come. Kaza chat. Is it? I don't know why God is going to Kaduna now. Nom. Is it Nom Shu or Nom Shu or something like that? I don't know if there's a name like that. Nom Nom Shu or something like that. Nom something. Listen, that is your name. You are. Why are they here? I call their names. I'm going to lay hands on you. Except for you, I don't even know why it's you. 
the rest of you are but please i want you to believe the moment i lay my hands on you something will happen the lord is saying i should start with you lord open her door now in the name of jesus christ hold my hands reproach leaves your life now in the name of jesus christ reproach leaves your life now by the power of the holy ghost reproach leaves your life now reproach leaves your life now hold my hands call your parents and tell them the lord is giving them breakthrough your family your entire family delta state breakthrough right now in the name of jesus christ hold on. the serious witchcraft over your life hold my hands lord the lord is asking me to walk with you this is how your destiny is opening up that's what the lord is asking me to do walk with you to walk with you something is happening it's a prophetic act you will not help her to walk with you opens in the name of jesus your destiny opens up now in the name of jesus christ lift your hands this girl lift your hands where you are i'm seeing wind around you and the lord is that wind is going anti-clockwise anti-clockwise and the lord said his restoration i stretch my hands upon you right now i release that grace for restoration restoration there are seven other people who will tap from this anointing this same anointing right now seven seven right now the anointing for restoration is coming upon them receive it right now wherever you are zabata kata la kata frate kese brende gatai lekate praskata baratu shubre diara hallelujah i'm seeing one mama outside it's like you came here with your daughter or something i'm seeing a woman sit down with her daughter outside now that's all i'm giving about you please if you can find that woman and if you understand what i've said i want you to run and come i want to pray for the sick now but god is delivering people god is delivering people seth seth who is seth s-e-t-h s-e-t-h your name is seth 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 the lord is stepping into his life right now seth is there someone with that name seth have you found the mama i'm talking about don't worry let them come let them come doesn't matter with your daughter mama Kai. there is the spirit of death on your family i'm going to pray for you don't be afraid i'm not a prophet of doom you came from where mama i came from edo state from edo state yes but i'm living with Sasa. you live in wusasa yes. but you came from edo state yes. i must pray for you there, why is he here who is this gentleman set you too you are an usher okay Kai, this is not the set i'm seeing no i will pray for you but i'm seeing someone else eh? please don't be embarrassed i want to pray for somebody now huh because i'm seeing an accident killing you and you took what's the name of this thing they take we we and you were high you were about to cross the road and then i'm seeing a truck with the name angote on it just running and killing you there is somebody here you smoke please don't be there's nothing to be embarrassed about it's not like you are not a serious person but this thing you started taking it from when you were small and it's destroying your life you want to be free but you can't leave it please don't be ashamed come out now quickly please if you are still thinking about it remain on your seat some you have to be free now come out i'm seeing one you wore jeans dress like your shirt I don't know if it's your shirt is jeans who is that no no there, there's another come out i will pray for you 
this this is not the only guy just keep them here i will pray for him i'm seeing another person outside the second overflow you are standing on the road the spirit of god is speaking to you speaking to you this thing they roll and they smoke and then you even i'm seeing you swallowing a drug i don't know what drug is that please come out come out clap for them as they come out join them quickly and come whether i mention your case or not you are involved in any kind of liquor and addiction indian helm whatever forward march come here your salvation come sir please appreciate them clap for them some of them are not bad people it's a spirit don't be ashamed please usher uh, direct them so that they come here i'm seeing up to five ladies in this group up to five ladies come don't be ashamed don't let anyone laugh at you please this is a miracle service join them we we codeine whatever it is join them whether you know the name of what you are smoking or swallowing or not come and join them please quickly that addiction must be broken now who can stand against the lord no one can no one will keep coming the devil is a liar who can stand against our king no one can, no one will. Oh, 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 please hold on please if the parents of the boy are here don't flog him please this is a very small boy you will not even know that this boy is wise to smoke this thing he saw an elderly person smoking it come out there is a small boy here i know what drag him out come where is the boy come out please gentlemen i'm going to pray for you don't worry you are not bad people i'm seeing a number of ladies up to five ladies they are refusing to come out there's nothing to be embarrassed jesus christ wants to set you free this is a miracle service it's not like you have evil people that's not what we are saying it's a spirit you don't stop by counseling mama there is a spirit of death over your family and i will pray for you i will pray for you in the name of jesus who is this your daughter what's your name my dear Is this mic working? Can you add Lillian, the voice? Lillian. Lillian, what do you want God to do for you? I want God to heal you. What's wrong with you? I've been having problems with my tongue. No. 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 You had a dream. Huh? You saw a snake. You can't even remember it. And from that day, you started having serious problems with your stomach. Huh? What's wrong with you? I've, I've, I've got to test. And, 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 and they told me that it's a, a liver problem. Liver problem. Because I look at you and you would think you are pregnant. But you are not pregnant. Your stomach is swelling up. Mama, is that true? How long has it been? It's out of three years now. Look at, look at, look at evil and wickedness. Are you married? Because you see now, assuming a brother has been trusting god to marry this sister do you think the brother will marry her please help me do you think he will marry her you look at her now and you think she's five or six months pregnant but she's not pregnant Kai. there is a lady who has refused to come out the power of god is going to come upon her outside you are supposed to be part of those who will be delivered here i'm seeing the angel of the lord outside that lady you were a sincere lady but i, I don't know if it's um, another lady i don't want to say what i'm seeing not to embarrass you because the, what you were introduced to is not only smoking this there are other things that i see that i may not be able to talk about 
I'm, I'm asking you to come out God wants you to be free for the sake of your family the power of God is going to come upon you outside outside to be free of this thing my dear look at me this is koinonia the Lord is going to set you free you believe in miracles mama you believe in miracles I have to pray for you money runs away from you huh madam I will pray for you mama yeah I'm okay do you hear how sir okay this is your daughter please be comfortable whatever language you can speak there is an interpreter here nobody says you must be able to speak English or whatever any language please if I call you here or you stand here for healing don't be under any pressure to say you must whatever language is comfortable speak it if I don't understand we'll find somebody to interpret please don't put yourself under pressure and say no we are excellent people but we are not fools we can't put anyone under pressure hallelujah mommy I want to pray for you because I'm seeing the Lord bringing restoration to your life this is what I am seeing and the Lord is asking me to pray for you can I pray for you ma'am I will pray for you I have to pray I'm seeing not you but I'm seeing somebody close to you having an accident traveling to Abuja and having an accident we have to pray I'm not saying it will happen once God reveals it is broken Lord Jesus stretch your hands and let's pray for this mommy you don't have to know her please stretch your hands and pray Lord we avert death we avert death now in the name of Jesus Christ we avert death by the power of the Holy Ghost mama is there a name like Gracilda is it Gracilda or Gracilda Gracilda or Gracilda something like that Gracilda Gracilda something like that if that sounds like your name I'm sorry if I don't mention it well the Lord kept mentioning it in my ears. Gracilda or Grisilda, something like that. If that is your name, please come out. Eh? Jacinta. No. But come. Where are you coming from? Zaria. Zaria, I have to pray for you. There's a gentleman who will destroy you. Be free now from every influence. Hold my hand anybody that is not designed by God I separate you and him forever say amen in Jesus name Gracilda Gracilda I'm hearing Gracilda something Hilda please if it's not you no problem but that's what I'm hearing mama let's pray in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you by the power of the Holy Spirit new beginning for you hold up please in the name of Jesus Christ my dear lay your hands on your stomach Kai Lord Jesus, you gathered people here tonight to set them free. I cause the spirit responsible for this. I decree and declare that this stomach will shrink. Every devil will go away in the name of Jesus Christ. If you agree with me, say amen. amen. Look at me and you will never be barren in your life. Say amen. There are two ladies you are inside here there is an embargo of barrenness on your family fire is coming on those two ladies now to break that embargo you don't even know it's in your family it may not be in your life but i'm seeing it right now the angel of the lord is locating two ladies right now and is breaking that embargo thank you father i put the word of god upon this prophetic word that embargo is broken right now right now right now two ladies two ladies there's no reason why you should come here and your life should be the same mama i will pray for you this is your daughter do you know that god is going to use this girl god will use your daughter for his glory hold my hands my dear there's more girl now but god will use you in the name of jesus christ I anoint you mama I decree and declare let hardship live your life 
in the name of Jesus Christ let hardship live your life in the name of Jesus hold on I'm seeing a wind and the Lord is asking me to follow it this is somebody's deliverance here this is somebody's deliverance here this is somebody's deliverance here this is somebody's deliverance the power of God is coming upon a few people as I'm walking across this place this is somebody's deliverance this is somebody's deliverance Lord set them free right now right now right now I'm seeing something rolling around this row this row this row this row shala sobaria taska bandabria legetege ba sharatos kabredia there's no hiding there's no hiding someone in this row someone in this row someone in this row hardship over your family is being broken right now i'm stretching my hands this row right there father locate that person right now right now right now right now right now in the name of jesus christ mama come i want you to rejoice look at me the lord hold on the lord is saying i should tell you that where you have been crying you will begin to laugh you have been crying for 30 years and the lord is saying your breakthrough has come in the name of the lord jesus christ this sheet for me come madam hold my hands the lord is there and she tell you it's your season of laughter in the name of jesus christ your season of laughter your season of laughter look at me lose her hands now lose her hands now lose her hands now in the name of jesus christ let her hands be loose your hands are tied i lose your hands in the realm of the spirit in the name of jesus christ open doors open doors open doors open doors open doors that's what the lord is saying open doors the lord has said you have waited too long it's time for the door of your destiny to be open open doors come there is a spirit in your life that makes bad boys look for you hold my hands leave her now out out when bad boys see you they can't leave you as they are passing they see you that spirit calls them back i don't know who this girl is you're a small girl but the things you know are what you have done out now in the name of jesus you have gone to places you should not go you have you have the phone numbers of people that if we know now i'm not saying you're a bad girl it's a spirit including married men they will be minding their business that spirit will call them to you i command that devil to leave you now leave you now in the name of jesus christ i want us to pray for this gentleman before we pray for the sick you see let me tell you something addiction is a very wicked spirit don't look at them especially our dear sisters my brother what happened to you eh? gone short gone short yes, who shot you i'm a soldier i was shot by my colleague Meduguri. you are meduguri yes sir no he wanted to kill you huh eh? but he didn't kill you he was directed to kill you Hi. you are a soldier how long has this been it's going to seven months now seven months which where did they shoot your legs and you can't walk with it look at me you believe in miracles lift your crutch lift it lift it come come lift your legs go ahead you're a soldier lift your legs look at this come on koinonia look at this lift your cross up look at this look at this look at this walk as fast as you can don't be afraid turn around turn around come because your wound is not healing there is a wound but there is not healing 
from today I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord who has perfected this leg will also perfect you where are you now you are in Zaria you are still in the force yes you are still in the force Ah? Huh? yes sir I want to pray for you do you believe God can favor yes sir I have to pray for you God is going to connect you with a senior person and he will lift you huh? look at me brothers and sisters I want to break this addiction from your life now are we together you are very sincere people some of you were initiated into this thing by bad friends some of you were initiated into these things by spirits I'm going to lay my hands on you while the congregation whether your child is here or not whether your brother is here or not as you are praying you are sowing a seed for your own home are you hearing what I'm saying stretch your hands don't look at anybody's face and run your mouth on any it's none of your business koinonia is, a, is like a hospital stretch your hands I will lay my hands on every one of them please all of you should pray I want to break addiction from your life don't feel condemned Jesus will help you it must be broken right now broken right now broken right now any kind of addiction out out now out out in the name of Jesus out look at this guy out break from his life now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ be set free be set free as soon as I lay my hands on you continue praying be set free addiction break break in the name of Jesus hold my hands darling no addiction for liquor no addiction for drugs something is leaving you I'm seeing something like an arrow coming out of your head out of her life now in the name of Jesus I break that addiction. Ah. Hey Jimmy, come. The Lord is saying you should pray for this guy. He will pray for you. This guy needs serious prayer. Just lay your hands on him. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Out! Out! Now! I command that devil. This is somebody that loves God but this addiction must be broken right now I break it right now I break it right now hold my hands you're a nice lady but we have to break this thing Lord please for your mercy let it be broken in her life in the name of Jesus Christ 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 hallelujah the Lord is asking me to minister to somebody I'm seeing a very interesting case you love God please don't be ashamed there is a particular pain reliever you are addicted to who is that person I want to pray for you now whether you are sick or not come and stand here particular pain reliever you can't help it you can wake up 1 a.m. in the night and swallow it it's a spirit pain reliever I'm not saying you are sick and they gave you in the hospital God is visiting addictions this night quickly come don't sit back and say I'm all right allow God set you free let them come look at this pain I don't know what it is but I hear my spirit pain reliever Whether you are sick, whether you are fine, the urge will hook you and you have to go and get it. If you, you can prefer to take it than to eat food, it must go right now. That's why God put this meeting to help people. Shalasata Pradiki Baladam.
there's one of you fire is coming on you now after that fire comes on you then i'll pray for the rest that's the instruction god is giving me one of you fire literal fire is coming upon you from heaven as i lay my hands upon you that addiction breaks right now stretch your hands and pray for them don't feel embarrassed broken now broken now broken now in the name of jesus addiction broken now broken now by the power of the holy ghost broken now broken right now by the power of the holy ghost broken now broken now if they are for prayers just move them forward broken now in the name of jesus broken now in the name of jesus broken now in the name of jesus it's broken now in the name of jesus broken in the name of jesus place your hand on your stomach god is not only setting you free he's setting you free from something else let her go now in the name of jesus christ addiction broken now addiction broken now by the power of the holy ghost addiction is broken now in the name of jesus christ broken now hold my hands let her go in the name of jesus christ there is a spirit that wants to destroy your life i command now there's no hiding place for you by the power of the holy spirit you must be set free you are standing in for somebody no problem in the name of jesus christ supernatural freedom hallelujah praise the lord now praise the lord please accept you are nursing a child or doing something let's all rise those outside they are still praying for you no problem all other people please stand up rise up i want us to pray if you are yet to submit your prayer request please do it quickly the bible says unto him that answers prayers shall all flesh come in one minute god can turn your life around everyone stretch your hands here and pray i'm going to lay hands on the request pray passionately from the depth of your heart lord i will not have to write this again pray i've written it the bible says after two days please if there are still people coming bring it quickly it says after two days he will revive us and on the third day he will raise us up online here please pray i'm laying my hands on this request and we're asking the god of heaven visit men and women are you praying now pray in the next one minute i'd like you to pray blast in tongues and say lord this is the last of the prayer request that i'm having to write concerning this issue hallelujah agree with me with a loud amen in the name of jesus christ I decree and I declare over every request gathered from this nation and from the nations of the earth online and here in our local environment Jesus I present to you impossible situations according to men and I ask you turn it around now turn it around now Turn it around now. Let every breakthrough request here be turned into a testimony now. Every case here said by men to be impossible, we, we collide that case with the power of God and we produce testimonies now. 
whoever must die for this prayer to be answered dies now whoever must live for this prayer to be answered lives now whoever must rise for this prayer to be answered rises now whoever must go down for this prayer to be answered goes down now whoever must hear god for this prayer to be answered hears god now father i pray in the name of jesus may your people not have to write this again agree with me may your people not have to write this again lord i pray that before miracle service april let every request here be turned into a testimony may the fire and the anointing of the holy ghost that makes all the difference let it rest on this request the same way fire fell from heaven to consume the sacrifice of elijah may fire fall on this now it has been prayed for you will not write it again it has been prayed for you will not write it again in the name of jesus christ hallelujah please lift up your hands everyone hallelujah listen we're in a very strange season of the manifestation first of the spirit of revelation listen carefully there is a very spectacular outpouring god wants to upgrade the work of his people to access the mysteries of the kingdom not just to know him god wants to equip us with mysteries are we together number two there is a strange outpouring of the supernatural power of god for performance for performance not just that you had god and it never happens not just that you speak and it never happens number three this is personal to us as a family of faith god has declared that is our year of triumph i want you to believe this word oh believe it otherwise you will sit down and you will watch people rise from nothing and then you will keep clapping i'd like you to insist we still have a few minutes for this meeting to be done tonight insist that if you have never stood upon this altar to testify make up your mind and say no god i must stand before your people are you hearing what i'm saying as i speak over your life now among the many things i want to speak right now i want to activate upon your life the grace and the unction for performance many of you may not know what this anointing is listen carefully lift your hands he said who has ever heard that a city was built in one day but as soon as zion travels there is a grace that is coming upon the people of god hear me for performance he said blessed is she that believes for unto her not unto them mm -mm, mm -mm. this is not a corporate thing unto her there shall be there are many things god has said that has not come to pass there is a grace that engenders performance i prophesy to you now in the name of the lord god who called me and sent me may that unction that will make results appear speedily let it come upon you like fire now let it come upon you like fire now receive it now it's yours receive it now it's yours receive it now it's yours performance 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 shake it la bata la prete get a soto ropa shiata grace for performance
hanging in the realm of the spirit that is already your portion released by god i decree within the next 30 days it appears physically now i prophesy the spirit of the lord is upon me i speak within the next 30 days it manifests in the name of jesus whatever has slowed down your pace in life so that you are not moving at the pace designed by god i put fire upon your feet and i command speed now i put fire upon your feet i command strength speed strength speed strength speed anything that has not yet worked in your life i don't know why but i'm prophesying i'm speaking to it start working now many of you don't understand what i'm doing to you start working now i don't know what projects you are currently on that has refused to produce i force it to bear fruit now I force it to bear fruit now. Hear me. The Lord spoke to my spirit and told me that the month of April for Koinonia, you may not believe it, but for Koinonia and everyone connected to this grace, the Lord said we will see a strange dimension of wealth and manifestation write this down brothers and sisters is the word of the lord i think i was telling you yesterday that the lord told me this you will see people that know nothing about money rise in a way that they themselves are asking what happened listen except the lord has not sent me i declare you must be part of the testifiers don't say i'm too small receive it don't be foolish in the name of jesus you must be a participant listen i tell you brothers and sisters please write this down you will see a strange rising rising write this down you will say i said it nothing to some i mean mysteriously people will have to ask what is happening it is a grace there is a grace that makes it happen i'm not talking of business i'm talking about the suffering word of god upon the life of a man may it be your portion in the name of jesus i decree upon you the kind of favor that will make even your enemies to say there is God in your life. I release that dimension of favor now. Listen. You can't rise in this kingdom without the favor of God. You will struggle for nothing. Please hear me. I prophesy it again. Whoever is lacking favor on his life. I decree from this night carry favor. Inside, outside, everywhere, online, carry favor. Let me prophesy over finances. Whatever makes money run away from you. Don't say I'm talking about money. You need it for what is coming in ahead. Whatever makes finances run from you whatever dug a hole in your life that makes you suffer in misery and penury i turn it around now 
I turn it around now. I pray for every student here. Malasuda kabari katoshela brigati skalabrati. The kind of result you have never seen, I release it to you now. I release it by the Spirit. I release it from the Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone due for promotion here, or anyone's family member rightfully due for promotion, and either because of religious sentiments or because of ethno tribal sentiments, they have trampled upon you. I decree and declare may the angel of God responsible for lifting visit your destiny and ensure that your promotion must manifest. I pray for your loved ones. I pray for you. Whoever is called jobless here, before next miracle service, get something doing now. I prophesy it again. Whoever is called jobless, before next miracle service, I don't know how it will happen, but get a good job. There are people here trusting God for direction. Very clear direction for the next level of their lives. Could be maritally, could be geographic location, whatever it is. Hear God in this season like never before. Hear God in this season like never before. Lift your hands. I release upon you the grace for supernatural miracles receive it right now receive it right now sapoto so receive it right now from tonight i declare whoever you speak over and command their destinies to open may my god honor it i said may my god honor it Whoever fights you goes down immediately. Whoever fights you goes down immediately. Hear me? Whoever mocks your passion for God goes down immediately. Whoever has said over his dead body for you to rise, may his prayer be answered. Whoever has said over his dead body for you to rise in Koinonia tonight, may their prayers be answered. Every embargo of bad luck upon your face that makes your helpers look at you and turn aside, I tear that veil completely in the name of Jesus. favor like never before testimonies like never before koinonia is the place of the anointing koinonia is the place of unction i pray for you a new a fresh grace and anointing let it rest upon you like the dew of heaven begin to flow very effortlessly in the gifts of the spirit I'm praying it again. Begin to flow very effortlessly in the gifts of the Spirit. Begin to flow effortlessly in the gifts of the Spirit. The mantle of honor that God has put upon my life, God has put upon this ministry. You are part of this vision. You are under this grace. There's no reason why it should not work in your life. I command it to start speaking now. No more dishonor in your life. 
no more dishonor in your life hear me for those who have been trying certain things for a long time whether it's exams whether it's admission whatever you have been doing again business i don't care i don't know where the embargo came from but i break it right now from today any man that looks upon you may god cause them to bless you whatever has killed your prayer life this night I release upon you the spirit of prayer and supplication listen see let me tell you something don't ever let people there are people who are under such passion for new things the system of the kingdom is dynamic but the foundations of the things that make men grow are the same prayer the word corporate fellowship obedience if you leave any of these things and you say you are looking for power or looking for anointing is a joke you will never find it one more time i restore your prayer life in the name of jesus christ i don't know what killed your passion for the word your passion for bible study your passion for devotion your passion for the things of god but i command the restoration this night I don't know what took away your passion for the house of God but in the name of Jesus may a love for the house of God like never before come upon you in the name of Jesus the grace God released to bring the word triumph to come to pass in this ministry may that grace speak over you I speak over your life it is your year of triumph therefore whatever has mocked God in your life I command that in as you enter April from tomorrow you triumph over it hallelujah as you enter April it will not be April full it will be April wise it will be April breakthrough it will be April miracles it will be April speed. Agree with me again. I'm praying with you. Between now and miracle service April, please hear me. Results together with tears in your eyes for joy, you will return with them. Results together with tears of joy in your eyes. Wave your hands and give Jesus all the praise. Wave your hands and give Jesus praise. Thank you, Lord, for performance. Thank you, Lord, for performance. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin